people. Come on. Come on, Dimitri. Jazz hands, man. Jazz hands. Come on, let's do it. You don't want to do it. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're live. We are live. Our special guest, Dimitri, has finally joined the internet. So <laughs> Dimitri from Primary Arms Optics is here to hang out with us. Uh, my apologies for coming on here a little bit late. We had some like technical difficulties we had to work through. Plus, I was like in a meeting that I had to get out of the meeting. But we're live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios, the Who Moved My Freedom podcast. I'm the host, Hank Strange. In case you've never met me, I'm here. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining tonight. I hope you guys have your big girl panties on because we're going to talk optics all night. Uh-oh. All night we're gonna well we won't just talk optics we'll talk about a lot of stuff um, we'll answer your questions that you guys had Dimitri's been on before although he seems to have totally forgotten that he was ever on the show deja vu yeah he's like, deniability That's yeah he's like I've never been on this show never seen you before <laughs> he's, he was all with us for like two hours but <laughs> man what is Vegas doing to you <laughs> it's all the all the shooting, man, all the concussion, the recoil is giving me brain damage. No, no good. All that long distance shooting, not good for the brain. Yeah. No, it's fine. All right. So we, we, we have to get Dimitri used to this. So we've got Dimitri here. There he goes. He's here. He's got his primary arms hat on. We'll talk about it. Um, I, do you have some like Black Friday stuff that you can give us? Uh, I'm not sure what they're doing. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. We'll find out. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some stuff. Walter's got some things. I actually have some things, some big daddy guns that I'm going to talk about, but mostly we're going to answer your questions. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining me. I want to thank everyone that supports us on Patreon. We're Patreon slash Hank Strange. So shout out to all the, the people that support us on there. Actually, let me go through the chat room here and shout out everyone that was hanging out with us. Kentucky Firearms Network was number one. In the chat, Little Lioness001 also in the chat. What's going on? Screaming Skull Saloon, The Archangel, Imposter, Chris B. Archangel, I think I said Archangel, I can't remember. I, I already forgot, so there you go. Uh, Chris Bullis, Mike Bryant. Uh, let me see who else is in here. The Range One. Also, The Range One. Um, let me see. Gorillas and Guns. Shout out to Gorillas and Guns. Uh, let me see who else, who else, who else do we see? Little Lioness. Little Lioness, I mentioned. Lola, That's thank you very much. Vanessa Kitty. Uh, Nate Kelsey. Vanessa Kitty is in there, I guess. Firearm Rack. Yeah, the uh, Firearm Rack is in there too. Yeah, he's in there causing trouble. Oh, he is? Uh oh. Causing trouble. Patrick, Patrick is in the chat. Patrick Moore or Babyface? Yeah. No, um, the firearms rack. So the oh, firearms rack, so, in there. So everyone knows. I guess he decided to flame you today, Walter. <laughs> so oh, he did. Oh, well, that's fine. I don't give a shit. Since care. you're always flaming him when he comes on the show, he fire decided, up the flamethrower. It don't matter. Yeah, yeah. Just hit him with it. So I think I said Vanessa Kitty. Um, TJ Blast. Yeah. Tango Hunter. Um, if I if I, I'm sure I left out people, there's a whole bunch of people I probably left out. T.J. Blaze, Fifty Stitches Steel, Mark Thompson, Bernard P. There you go. Shout out. If I missed you, opt out of gun control. He says howdy. Warsaw Patriot. There you go. Lola's in there. Music lover. You know. Um, so there you go. I think if I missed out anyone, Jackson Oldman, he's in here. Exhale also in here. So shout out to all those folks. Okay, guys, don't forget to click the thumbs up and share this video on your social media with family and friends. Let folks know that we're doing this. This is going to be a pretty good conversation. We always have good convos when we're hanging out with Dimitri. So, yeah, we, we, we can talk. We can get some talking going on. And, um, and then, you know, of course we have Walter. There he goes. Walter from Safety Harbor Firearm. Yeah, I'm here. He's wearing a Yellowstone hat. Yeah, it's from vacation this uh, summer. Yeah, sure. so. yeah, I'm surprised I've never seen you pull out that hat before. I had it on before. You just I've haven't never noticed seen you pull out either. Thank goodness. <laughs> pull out. I don't pull out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> a good thing you haven't seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I, did you hear the? Uh, did you hear the part where I said thank goodness? Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. So how's everything going, Dimitri? What's up, man? Uh, not a whole lot, man. Just you know, just doing it. Just trying to get all the uh, all the new optics out for next year. Trying to get everything. Uh, there's a lot that goes into uh, verifying all these reticles and doing it right. So, oh, okay. Can you yeah. can you give us like I know it's uh, it's probably a, a whole bunch of th different things, but just like a, a gist of it so we can understand what you do before you certify all these things. Well, I mean, you're you're taking, uh, you know, as you know, the, the the reticles I make get kind of they're very complicated. They got range estimation. They got uh, built-in range finders and leads and all kinds. Stuff. So you're you're taking uh, 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 an angular measurement and turning it into a linear measurement. So whatever the target equates to in minutes of angle has to be converted back into the focal length and what it will equate to as far as a, 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 the actual linear cut on the glass. So you picture the reticle. The laser oh, has okay. to then cut it all out, so you have the to space the, the space between the right. Yeah, okay. So I have to make sure that all that is one hundred percent, and then when we get the prototype, I have to look through and put it up against all the charts and make sure that all the measurements. Are 100%. It's it's the secret why our stuff is so accurate is that you're not dependent on the on turret tracking. It's all laser etched and right there. So yeah, so it's in the glass. You don't you know. Yeah. You don't have to spend a lot of time calculating. Right. Yeah. And if you're like me and you don't like doing all the crazy calculations or having to whip out your phone. Yeah, I mean, even even stuff that's kind of pre-calculated, you know, there's like other companies that have different bullet drop and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, just because they have a bullet drop doesn't mean that it was cut correctly to the right increments. So it will look like a bullet drop compensator. But like, like in the past, a lot of people have said, well, bullet drop compensators are always off. And they are. They were. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So th there's a lot of stuff out there that's not a real bullet drop compensator. It, it, when you actually start shooting it, it's like way off. And that's kind of why our, you know, we're, we're kind of known for it is that our stuff is on. Because I kind of take it through this process and get all the bugs out. Oh, okay. So... So basically, you design these optics, and then someone manufactures a prototype somewhere. Okay. Well, I, I designed the reticle here, and we send the blueprints over, and they actually uh, convert it to their files. I have to check their files, make sure all their files are correct, and then um, they actually get the prototype back to us. And I have to make sure that that prototype is correct, that they actually did it correct. So, okay, so yeah, so there's lots of double and triple verification going on because you don't want to build a prototype but type and it was and the specs are out. Right. Once we get the prototype right, then it's easy. You know what I mean? They can reproduce the same scope over and over. It's just getting the initial prototype correct and <clears throat> that's the part that takes a long time. Okay. Yeah. Um I'm kind of doing that for like 13 different projects. So my Right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Okay. So th uh, those aren't coming out um, for SHOT Show. Those are coming out after that, I'm assuming. Um, some are. Like, uh, you mean to market or the prototypes I shot for people to check out? Um, th yeah, to market. Uh, probably not. I don't. Maybe. But, you know, they, they give a rough ETA. So who knows? Some of the ETAs are February. Sometimes they show up early. Sometimes they don't. Okay. Yeah. Is there any way to get your volume up a little bit? I, I think, you know, um, you're, you're talking a little quiet. I'm getting some people out there saying you're talking. I just turned you up from on my end. Oh, there we go. That bad? Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay. I got to get the phone closer to me. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, cause you know, do you know, do you know Patrick from, uh, well, he's formerly of the firearm blog. I don't know if you know Patrick Roberts. No. Yeah. I okay. might. 
Yeah, you probably do. He was he was at the far he was at TFB TV. Mm, I don't know. Oh, okay. You probably know who I'm talking about, but you don't realize it. Okay. Yeah, he's watching us right now, so I'm guessing he has some interest in optics. <laughs> yeah, my, what you have to say. Mm. My, if you picture like a, a, a computer with a bunch of uh, windows open, that mm. that's kind of my brain. It's like halfway fried. <laughs> mm. So. Um, but. Yeah, go ahead, Walter. No, I'm just the whole the whole manufacturing process probably is interesting to talk about. From the time it takes something to get an idea for a new one, you figure out what you want to do. You get a prototype. You work out all the stuff you're talking about. You work out the manufacturing, and then actually shows up. You got to figure out the box. You know what the box is going to look like, and all the instructions. And then when it shows up here, you got to double check that again to make sure somebody didn't um, leave off half the uh, English in it, and or the proper English, I'd say, or or however it's you know written properly. And then you know then you say go. You know, yeah, so. I mean, all, all that stuff happens here. Uh, I mean, as far as the reticles and the optics I design, I mean, some of the optics are made here in the States. Some are made in Japan. Some are made in China. Depends on the, you know, the price point. Right, right. But to give you an example, um, I, I'll have a concept as far as uh, a reticle design, and I'll run it through several of the like master sniper instructors of the army marine corps uh competition shooters uh just anybody and everybody that kind of knows their stuff and we'll pick it apart and see you know what's what needs to be kept what needs to be taken out how to make it more efficient and so on so when i design these things it, it gets passed around to a lot of people and uh you know when, when we get it back it's a the final product is uh it, tends to be, you know, far superior to anything that's out. I mean, that's kind of our, my thing is to try to get the best of the best of the stuff. I mean, the, the reticles you guys see, I've, I've designed like thousands of different reticles. So what you're seeing is like kind of like the cream of the crop. So when people say, well, you know, have you tried this? Have you tried that? Yeah, we have. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. I mean, and then, yeah, you're actually out there practically testing them. And then I think, I don't know, you guys might have been doing this for longer than a year or so, but you guys are now giving like a lifetime guarantee on everything, right? Or like, oh, I don't know how to word it properly. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah. Uh, right. Most of the line, as far as primary arms goes, has gone lifetime. Uh, mm -hmm. the on stuff has always been lifetime. So all my, you know, all the ACOG stuff I've done has lifetime on that. Uh, all the platinum stuff has lifetime. So, you know. Oh, cool. Most okay. Of yeah, Walter, were you coming in there to ask a question? No, well, no. I, well, I was thinking in my head, what do you have is 50 cal rated, but um, is everything 50 cal rated or some things are, some things aren't? Um, 50 cal is, is kind of strange. It's like our, our one by six, uh, uh, not even platinum, our budget stuff, that's like 289 will handle a 50 cal yeah because it's really simple pretty much yeah i mean yeah that what what we look what we try to do is find a very simple design and the, and the gen one two and three now on the on the one by six the gears are so reliable I and mean, you can mount it on a, a, a scar you can mount it on a, a foul and uh you know it, it sticks together but for a 50 cal or uh six by 30 platinum is the best way to go for that I don't know if you guys saw the mild shot video I did the other day, but that's where that's the way to go. Uh, Mr. Guns and Gear has the same uh, six by thirty on his uh, uh, one hundred seven. So. Oh, okay, okay. So that should that should be able to handle. Um, and where's that one? All the platinum ones. I think the glass is Japan, right? Or the whole thing yeah, is in Japan. The whole thing is in Japan, and that's one of the things you guys have to keep an eye out for. Okay. Uh, certain companies say it's made in Japan, but what they're doing is they're manufacturing the parts in China, getting shipped over to Japan and assembled there, uh, or getting sent over to Germany and assembled in Germany, and they're telling you it's a German-made optic when it's really not. So for us, it's 100% made in Japan, and it's coming out of the same factory that produces Night Force, Luopold, Trijicon. So it's, it's literally like basically a Night Force with a different, you know, rebranded it, it's got a different name to it so yeah it and, and, and so 
Go ahead. What are we looking at price point wise? Because people ask me all the time about scopes, and I don't sell scopes, but I could, you know. Yeah, the, our uh, platinum line ranges from, um, I believe, the one by eight is like thirteen ninety nine, and the six by thirty is fourteen ninety nine. So, yeah, I mean, comparatively, that's like the, the other optics that you said that are made in that factory are like somewhere between oh. two and three times, sometimes four more times expensive than that, right? Oh, yeah. Like our one by eight is the uh, Leupold Mark 8 that they used to put out. It's literally the exact same scope, same machining, same glass, same everything. Uh, they, they discontinued it, so we took it over. Uh, that scope retailed for about 3900 bucks. Oh, okay, but wait. So, but that scope didn't have an ACSS reticle etched into it, right? No, no. It just okay, like so it. that would be the difference with these—that it's the same scope, but it has the ACSS in it. Yeah, uh, same scope. It you know it cost half half the price, and it has the ACSS reticles in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, Some somebody. I mean, I got a lot of people that don't have fourteen hundred dollars for a scope. Um, <laughs> but and so, some do. But I mean, something in the you know, is there something lesser that'll work? Maybe yeah. not as powerful, but right. I, th I think the best bang for the buck is uh, probably our one by six Gen three. Those retail okay. for two eighty nine. Yeah, that's cheap. Yeah, and they come yeah. with a lifetime warranty. Um, they easily outperform standard ACOGs with RCO or any kind of LCAN or any kind of high end optic you can think of. They'll easily outperform it at the range. And uh, that's due to the reticle. The reticle is the brain of the optic, if you will. That's where everything is happening. So for for two eighty nine, what you get on that thing, it's it's a steal, you know. Okay. So, yeah. Well, I've always been I've always been told the less gizmos in the scope, the better when you're when you've got something like a fifty cal that's really banging things around. Um, a lot of scopes have a lot of things you don't really need. Um, well. What's weird, it's, it's not like a, like a 50 cal. It depends on the model of, of, uh, of gun. A 50 cal itself doesn't really kick a whole lot. There's not a lot of kick there, especially if it's a heavy gun. Um, it's more of the uh, harmonic signature that the, the impulse coming back from the gun as far as the, the bolt slamming back. That's why like FNs, and, I mean, uh, uh, fouls and... Uh, uh, stars are so hard on optics; they're actually oh. harder than a fifty cal. Than oh, so when it's semi-auto, you're saying, but right, with right. bolt action is less so. No, not semi-auto. Even like an AR-15 is semi-auto, but the, mm -hmm. the buffer, the buffer tube, and the buffer spring and stuff catch a lot of that uh, that recoil. To oh, where okay. a foul, it's like clunk, clunk, clunk. You got it's slamming back. Uh, pellet guns, like a spring air rifles, pellet gun, yeah. Spring-loaded air rifles are hard on scopes. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Because they've got that all that motion going on inside of it when it lets loose. Right. The reverse recoil that you're getting. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's. Um, I've always been told like an air rifle scopes will survive a 50 cal. I've never used one before on one, but that's that's kind of the idea behind it. It's the same kind of motion, you know. Right. So, mm -hmm. But. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, so here's what the uh, the one by six looks like. Here, yeah, let me lock it on you here. Okay, is this the one by six platinum? No, this is actually the upcoming one by six front focal. Plane. This is the ACSS Raptor. Okay. But, uh, the second focal plane, what we have now, has the, uses the exact same scope body, so they look exactly the same. Okay, but this uh, but this one has a different focal plane. Yeah, this is a different focal plane, different reticle. Oh, okay, but, but but you you know what I mean? You you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to tell them apart side by side. They look exactly the same. Okay, cool. Um, the firearm rack wants us to ask you about like glass quality or grades of glass. You know, um, he says would love to get into the weeds on HD glass versus non HD glass. Um, that that's more to the platinum stuff. It wouldn't be on the uh, budget stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of people think HD means like high definition. That 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 that's not what that's for. I believe it's high density or something like that to it. You know. Oh, okay. 
So yeah. I don't, just, I don't is, that deal like, with is that a difference in clarity or? Um, I don't really know, to be honest with you. I don't really deal with the glass or the, um, uh, what I mainly deal with is the reticle. That's, that's okay. kind of what I deal with there. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. And I'm getting some questions like John Smith Jr. wants to know what is ACSS Raptor? So ACSS Raptor. Well, ACSS originally was uh, uh, a reticle system I put together for uh, military law enforcement use. And um, <clears throat> it stood for advanced combat sighting system. And it was designed to improve on the standard RCO to improve your first hit ratio in an unknown distance uh, shoot. When, you, when you're in a combative situation and you're shooting back and forth, uh, you don't most of the time don't know how far away the target is. So you're having to figure that out on the reticle itself. The standard RCO kind of uses a shoulder width apart. Okay, and just to clarify, what's RCO? Uh, RCO is what's currently in service on the TA-31 ACOG. Okay. Uh, what, so what does that mean? Is that some kind of reticle something? I have no clue what RCO itself means. But that's just what they've named the reticle oh. in the uh, ACOG. So the 4X oh, ACOG okay. is okay. basically what, what you would have in service. That's It's mm -hmm. issued to pretty much all the branches. Um, so the standard RCO lacks a lot of things, like a lot of your hold off. It doesn't have any leads. Uh, it only range estimates shoulder width. So the the ACSS was a, a study to determine how to improve your first hit ratio. So I started talking to all the different sniper schools and so on. And what we found out, the number one reason shots were missed further out is wrong range estimation. Mm -hmm. So because a bullet doesn't fly like a laser beam when you shoot further out, it, it drops. Right. So at, at say 600 yards, it's dropping over 80 inches. So you're, you're, you're talking about a whole other person on top of you mm -hmm. and drop. So, uh, and then the number two reason is wind, uh, you know, the wind will throw your, your round off, especially five, five, six, it's very susceptible to drift. So it's very important that one, you know, how far away the target is and two, how far is the wind going to push that bullet over? And that's what the ACSS solves is your gives you better range estimation and better wind hold off. So long story short, I can take, you know, we take my friend's girlfriend and she's never shot before. And with a two second lesson, I mean, she's hitting steel out to 600 yards. And that, that's the thing with these things is you can be a brand new shooter and not know anything and dial this thing at a hundred yards and be on out to six plus, you know, and the hardest okay. part is the wind call. Okay. Yeah, you know, that's uh, one of the reasons why I really wanted to get into this, um, have this conversation with you, I think, was to talk about, I mean, people always trying to figure out what optic should they put on their gun. And, you know, nowadays people have multiple guns or some people only have one. So they're trying to figure out all that stuff. You know, I'd like to get into that. I am getting some questions, so I figure I should ask you some of the stuff that, you know, maybe it might seem, you know, a little bit trivial or whatever, but I think people out there like to know. Warsaw Patriot wants to know, is Dmitry Russian, uh, Russian American or Ukrainian American? Um, you know, do you care to talk about that? Yeah, no problem. Uh, both of my grandparents were Greek. I was going to say Greek is a, <laughs> Dimitri is a Greek name. Yeah, so we're totally <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. What, what happens is uh, Russians use, are Greek Orthodox. Yeah. And then the Greek Orthodox religion, very often you get named by a saint. So, you know, the 12th saint. So Dimitri is like very popular in Russia. Okay. So Dimitri is the saint of what? Of throwing uh, lead down range? <laughs> no, it's, it's St. James. Of what? James. Oh, okay. So, but in, in, in you know, and in, in they converted over to where Dimitri is James. So, oh, okay. oh so, Dimitri is so that's a very common name, name then, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. That's weird. Yeah, uh, yeah that's a weird jump. I, I went to a, a, a Russian party once, and I, I swear to God, these guys were like in the Russian mob or something. Uh, one was this uh, little old man tatted all over, and they were all kissing his hand. And he, uh -huh. he, he, he was a dumb. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he looked at me and he goes, "What's your name?" And I go, "Dmitri." He goes, "Oh, you're a Russian." I go, "No, I'm Greek." 
Same he thing. goes, no, you're Russian. You look like a real Russian. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I didn't argue. I was like, all right, just, you know. Pass the vodka. <laughs> yeah. So Lola's given me this thing. And now we're getting into the meaning of the word Dimitri. So Lola just gave me something says origin, the name Dimitri from the Greek okay. Demetrius or Demeter, which um, from right. the Greek myth mythological goddess of agriculture and fertility. The names is right. com it's composed of the elements of the earth, the meter mother, right. I guess meter. Yeah, there you go. Right. Hey, yeah, it comes from the meter. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Real popular in Russia for some reason. Yeah, Dimitri. Yeah, I was born in Chicago, so <laughs> oh. it's all Greek to me. We'll, we'll yeah. forgive you. We'll forgive you for that, you know, being from Chicago. <laughs> the, the, so there's some kind of gangsterism going on there. I don't care what you say. He doesn't want to talk about the Greek mafia, but I think he has some connections. <laughs> you know. We oh, won't talk. Yeah, huh? We're not going to talk about that here. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. No. Okay. We touched a little. We touched a little nerve over there. Okay. Yeah. We could talk about the. We could talk about the Russian mafia. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> yeah. We just can't talk about the Greek mafia. Okay? Back to the radicals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I. I listen. I. I take the hit. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Okay, so listen, we've got uh, we got a lot of people in here. I want to remind everyone to click the thumbs up and share this video. Um, in the beginning here, when Dimitri was talking, I was sharing it out. So if you guys, uh, you know, if you're following me on Facebook or actually shared it on Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that, and you see my post, repost my thing or like it or something like that. Repost to share. All of that helps us out to get stuff going. Just so. You guys know. So I know you were talking a little bit about uh, upcoming optics. Any of those things you can talk to us about? Like, or, or is that all embargoed stuff? Um, no, I, I can talk about some of the stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. um, so the, you know, the, the, the ACSS Raptor is the front focal plane variation of what we have going on the one by six. And um, it's a very streamlined uh radical it's very clean and uh it's performing really well through testing you know going to unknown distances and heavy wind we're getting hit fairly easy out to 600 yards with it um we also have uh, uh a few second focal plane optics coming they will they will look the same as well there's one called the uh acss predator and uh, it's got uh, bullet drop compensation that's auto range in 10 inches. Uh, 10 inches is the average, you know, human head, uh, average coyote center mass. Um, and it, it's something that you can visualize on pretty much any object. And it, it's more geared towards uh, hunting. It matches up with uh, 55 grain VMAX, uh, 308 soft points for pig hunting. So if you're a coyote hunter or a pig hunter, that kind of thing, it's, you know, the ideal optic for that. Okay, cool. Uh, let me just stop here for a quick second. I want to shout out um, Pickle Rick. Pickle Rick has, and, and his name is Pickle Rick has a Mavic Pro. So shout out to Pickle Rick has a Mavic Pro. He just gave us 50 bucks. Wow. So uh, he says, uh, not much. Keep it real. Have a great night. Oh. So I'm not sure what who he was talking to there in the beginning, but he says, uh, keep it real and have a great night. So thank you, Pickle Rick. How so do we Mavic split that? Pro. How does that work? Um, I, I, I'll give you a little something. I'll break you off a little piece of that, you know. What could I just I'll, got? I'll take, you to, I'll take you to lunch or something. Oh, you got ice cream, Walter? Got ice cream and a brownie. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll take you out to lunch at SHOT Show. <laughs> you came out here and didn't even come see me. Uh, well, well, both you, Walter and I were out there, huh? Last SHOT Show, you were, yeah, I saw all the pictures and stuff. Yeah, we, yes, we were at SEMA. We were there for SEMA. Yeah, my wife saw all those hot chicks you guys were uh, uh -oh. hanging Oh dear! Yeah, what, yeah. I don't know what hot, what hot chicks are you talking about. Yeah. I don't know all the ones in the pictures. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. I know what you're talking. My about. wife saw that. <laughs> she wasn't really excited about it either. So oh. she's not so, usually that way. But that... yeah. So I guess I'm not going to be able to hang out. 
You should have come with us, man, to the show. You're into cars, right? I like cars. I wasn't invited. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, I tell you what. Next year, I don't. Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know if Walter's going next year, but next year we'll we'll definitely we'll hang out with you. Yeah, it's a crazy. Yeah. It's a a crazy thing, man. That show is insane. Have you ever been to? You've been in Vegas for a couple of years. You ever went out to SEMA? No. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's way bigger than Shot Show, man. Makes oh, yeah. Shot Show look what? like uh, Shot Show's tame compared Shot? to SEMA. How do you get bigger than Shot, man? That's it's, crazy. It's way bigger. Cars, than Shot. man. Everybody can have a car. Everybody can't yeah. have a gun. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. True. Um. No, I'll tell you, they use every convention center in Vegas. And the outside areas. Yeah, they use the insides and the outsides. Hmm. There's freaking people everywhere. So, yeah. And the outside's open to the public, so. Yeah, um, you can actually walk around the outside one without ever, like, you don't have a badge. You don't need a badge or anything. To get inside, you need a badge, so. That's the whole thing with that. So it was crazy when Walter and I were there. I think I did. I did. Uh, I know you texted me a couple times. I don't know. I responded, right? Whatever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, okay, since you brought this up, should uh -oh. I bring up the time when I came to Vegas to hang out with you and I lugged this massive 50 caliber <laughs> gun along with me yeah, and a whole bunch of ammo and I came you to shoot with you and then I was out there in Vegas and you didn't even know me? You, yeah, right. <laughs> you were supposed to take me out. We were supposed to go out into the desert and shoot the 50. You remember that? I had like dental surgery and my face looked like a chipmunk. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. A likely story. And no, I, I know it's true. You sent me the pictures. I know, I know it's true. And then, but we he, did, the he did bitch about that the whole time, though. Yeah. Because, see, if I would have known you were having the surgery, I wouldn't have carried the 50 cal in my trunk with a whole, like, I don't know, I think I had, like, 100 rounds of ammo, and I had I to go through a border cr crossing security check <laughs> both I ways. I can't believe we're on a live show and you're still bitching about all this. <laughs> <laughs> you started it. You started it. Huh? Mute Walter and his dick oh, Lola says mute, mute your spoons, Walter. I have to get plastic spoons, all right, then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably have to get plastic okay, spoons. Well. Yeah. Oh, now he's shouting at us, Walter. Okay, so let's go. <laughs> okay, Walter. Let me see. There's a bunch of questions here, so I'm trying to get to everyone's questions. You know, Walter's, Walter's acting outrageous. Let me see. Um, okay, let's see. Where should I start? Da, 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 da. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Give me some questions here for the people. Oh, one of the okay. guys was asking, "What's a good scope for people with old guys with bad eyes?" <laughs> uh, I think the one by six, same one, but with a kiss reticle. Uh, kiss reticle is basically you get a, a chevron aiming point. And then a bar underneath it for a couple of mils if you want to get a little further out. But it just gives you a really bold, fast, quick aiming point. It's got decent glass. The reticle is nice and clean and gives you a, a, a bold point to see very quick. So if you can't see very well, that's like a – or if you have astigmatism or something, that's a that's a cool way to go is, is that thing. It works pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Um, e. Kokel says most of the time you don't have a target just standing there to range with a reticle, just saying. So I, you know, which I guess is true. Your your target's either moving or hiding. So you know, from what? A, he says what? that most. He says uh, E. Kokel says most of the time, you don't have a target just standing there to range with a reticle. Most of the time, doing what? So I guess most of the time when you're shooting at something, you don't have a target to range. If you if you don't have a target, I'm assuming you shouldn't be shooting anything. Yeah, I don't you know. know. Unless you're just spraying and praying. Uh, I don't know if he's talking about combative wise. I mean that that those type of systems have been around for over fifty years on both sides. Yeah, that, that's how it works. So I don't know, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming. So I mean, this. Okay, so there's two ways that we can look at the this uh, the target. So if you're in a combat situation and you're in a firefight with someone. Um, you know, maybe the person doesn't necessarily present themselves as a target, but you, you're somehow figuring out where that target is, right? Well, what's happening is that 
very often you either see just the head or, well, it depends. You could see the full body. You could see from the waistline up. I mean, people present themselves in uh, different situations. You have multiple target engagements. Uh, so, I mean, it, that, all that varies. But range estimation is, like, key. That's, like, right. that, that, I mean, that, that's been around for years. I mean, it's why the yeah. it's why car seal is the way it is and why the PSO one is the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, Ikoko, he can he can tell us uh, where what he wants to do to get specific there. I know that if you're hunting, you're going to be shooting at something. You're going to see it, right? Oh, yeah. You know, you're going to see what you're shooting at if you're hunting a deer or, like you said, if you're hunting coyote, if you're hunting a squirrel, you're going to have something. I think if you're in a combat situation and you're, and you're going up against uh, other human beings – you know, sometimes they're not that clever. <laughs> if, if things go easy, they might be out there in the open, and that does happen. But I think if people are smarter, they'll they they will you know um, take some kind of cover. But there's still things around them. So if you can if you can figure out like where's the fire coming from? Oh, yeah. I mean, after a while, you get like I can range estimate without people there. It, it's really easy to visualize a, a person standing. Like the the brackets are for full height. So if I see a vehicle, I kind of imagine how tall a person would be standing next to that vehicle or a doorway, window, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's set to, to range 18 inches. So, I mean, anything, yeah. the car rims, stuff, you know, whatever. But, yeah. uh, th I mean, that the concept of range estimation is not new technology. It's the same way that a, a sniper would mill something out. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, that, that's been around for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I think I think the question, the the thing there. Not that I want to dwell on it. I mean, he could tell us uh, specifically what he's trying to say. I mean, I think maybe it sounds like reading the comment here that he's saying that you don't really need this. I don't agree <laughs> with that. You know, yeah. I think you do need it. And <laughs> go ahead, huh? No, you 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 need it. Not only do you need it, you need more of it. It all sounds great until you're, you know, 500 meters out having to make these shots. You need not only the drop, you need your hold off, you need your range estimate. I mean, these, these are military studies that have gone on literally for the last 50 years. So, mm -hmm. you know, what people think you need and don't need, that if you want to, like, do all the research and all that stuff, all you got to do is look at the military and what they're doing. I mean, there's a reason they have this stuff the way they have it. Right. So... Yeah, uh, Vanessa Kitty wants to know what kind of binoculars we like. So, um, I don't know. I don't. I do have a pair of binoculars. I think they're. Um, what's the? What's the thing that begins with a B? Um, <laughs> Bushnell. Bushnell. Yeah, Bushnell. I have Bushnell uh, binoculars. I don't really use them that often. Um, most of the time, I'm using a, a scope of magnification, <laughs> yeah, to look what whatever I'm looking at. Do you guys make uh, binoculars? No. Okay. So, do you use anything like that for spotting or for spotting? I use a spotting scope. Mm -hmm. but for typical use, the way you do it is you you have like a you know if you're not using the gun itself with a scope on it. There's like a, a 1x magnifier. Or I'm sorry, a 3x. So you could, let's say you're hunting, you're set up on your pack and you're just laying there and you start scanning the area and glassing and looking for a game. And then once you see the game, you can attach it to your, you know, to your gun. And now take your shot, if you will, kind of thing. So. Oh, okay. That, and then, so you don't, you don't use like a. Uh you know, your regular binoculars or anything like that? No, nah, hardly ever. I try to stay really lightweight. And so if I, if I can use the scope or the magnifier on it, that's the way I kind of do it. Oh, okay. Um, my path, yeah. Well, you've been in my area, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not ready to come out to these deserts, man, they won't last long. So my pack is literally mainly water and cold weather gear because it gets really cold uh, really fast yeah yeah so it's more geared of water uh i have a, a like some dried up nuts and stuff for food and uh a sleeping bag and, and gore-tex gloves beanies that kind of thing so and out here you're going to be 
hiking a lot. I mean, you're talking about hiking 20, 30 mile kind of thing. So I'm not trying to carry extra weight. Oh, okay. Uh, Walter, do you use any kind of binoculars? I have binoculars. I mean, but I, I don't use them so much when I'm shooting. I think it sometimes be nice to have my laser rangefinder with me, but um, well, that only goes out so far. Yeah, here, here's another thing that we found out with laser rangefinders, and that's why you need the ranging and all that stuff in it. Um, very often, you know, uh, especially a lot of the civilian handhelds that we have, uh, you're not going to get signal past 500 yards. You, you have to, in order to get signal, you need to beam a house or a, a, a bunch a of trees. Yeah, something big and reflective. So if you can imagine a man-sized target that's moving to try to get a reading off that, and then now it goes, you know, the guy goes in the prone position, even like the, uh, what is that new one, that uh, SIG 2200, the Kilo 2200, which is probably the best handheld finder that's out right now, you're not going to get an accurate signal. And, and that's the, the thing with these uh, scopes is that I can, I can range estimate even a prone target, you know, out to eight, eight plus. So, uh, yeah. In order cool. to get signal on something like that, you're, you're talking about a $10,000, you know, laser range finder, like a military right. grade. Right. Right. Okay. Um, someone asked if there's a 300 blackout with ACSS reticle. I'm going to let you answer it, it um, but the 300 blackout with the ACSS reticle is right behind me. There is right. indeed one. We have a link in the description of this. As a matter of fact, there's a bunch of links in the description for primary arms for uh, various optics and primary arms. And if you guys are interested in those and you click through the link, yeah, you'll get free shipping and you'll get either the mount or the scope, uh, the scope rings, whatever goes along with that particular optic from primary arms. So um, you want to talk about the 300 blackout real quick, Dimitri? Um, basically what you just mentioned in the back is the, the model I was going to refer him to, which is that same one by six for 289 with the lifetime warranty. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it has your supers and it has your subs in it. So you could shoot either one. Uh, currently, I'm working on one that's going to go on an ACOG that we hope to put out sometime next year. But that uh, that one by six right there is a great way to go. On so ACOG. is that the ACOG right there? Is that the prototype? This? No, this, no. Is, oh, the, okay. uh, this is the ACSS uh ACOG TA31 that I did with Trijicon last year that this has been in the market for a while. Oh, okay, cool. And, and then I just did this uh, TA44 with them that came out. Oh, I don't know. This, this actually, this is the one that uh, Mike Oh, that's the, yeah, that, uh, what was that? This is the one that Mike was heavily involved in, Mr. Guns and Gear. Oh, he was involved in the small one? That's, that's the one I'm highly interested in, man. I like the size of that. Well, he was, uh, he contacted me and goes, dude, because we sent him the TA31. I mean, he, he was out here and we shot it and stuff. And he was like, you know, w w once you start shooting this stuff, you realize it, it's not, it's such a great design because I designed it. It's just the math. The math tells you how much the bullet's going to drop, how much it's, the wind's going to take, it, and so on. Okay. So. Uh, anyway, so he goes, you need to check out the TA-44. TA-44, that's what the, that smaller one is? Yeah, it's the ACSS TA-44. Okay. Uh, with the, got the ACSS CQB M5 radical in it. And uh, so the, the original TA-44 comes with the uh, circle and a dot. And there's a lot of problems with it. That circle will bloom and create like a like a fuzzy type of look within it because it's blooming when this fiber optic right here, the way a, an ACOG works is there's a fiber optic uh, tritium insert. So this fiber optic gathers the ambient light. So when that light is too much, it blooms out. So uh, that, and it's got just a single dot, any kind of single dot optic in medium range is basically useless past 200 yards. It, it, it's hard to, to hold over. Um, and uh, he's like, man, you got to do an ACSS on that. It would be just the sweetest optic out. And at first I thought he was crazy. I'm like, why in the hell would you want to do a one and a half power? 
So I got the sample in hand and I realized what he was talking about. This is basically, don't think of this as a scope, think of it as a red dot that uses a fiber optic tritium. So it's a, it's a red dot with no batteries. Mm -hmm. um, that extra half magnification gives you the clarity to get to 300 plus. It's that it gives you almost better than 2020 vision. It's not like a magnified scope where we can really zoom in. You just see the sight picture and it just gets really clean, you know, from their, from their glass or the extra half or whatever is happening there. It, it just gets real clean. And uh, with the ACSS in it, we're able to hit, you know, same times up close as a red dot. We're running around and, and TQB in with it like, like you would a dot. But because of the built-in auto ranging and BDC, we're getting hits out to 500 yards on prone sized targets. Mm -hmm. So it's not only a red dot, but it can go into a medium range situation and, and hit further out. Oh, okay. So it, it's become the number one selling optic in, uh, in I, I, I believe in Trigicon history as well. The TA31 ACSS was like broke records and stuff. And then the TA44 now is like crazy to keep in stock. I mean, th this thing is selling like bananas. Oh, okay. We when we first released it, we ran out. We didn't real, we didn't think it was going to be that big. And uh, so, if you guys are seeing them, grab them because once they go out of stock, by the time we get more, it's it's like months before they can. What's the cost on that one? Uh, they're kind of pricey. They're like twelve uh, thousand thirty-seven. I want to say. Okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, yeah. you know, I like the size and all that kind of stuff. So, you know. It's Trigicon, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it comes down to you know what what you're willing to spend. If you can afford it, grab it. You know, it's yeah. it's worth the money. Yeah. Uh, if you can't, there's there are other red dot options, right? That you would recommend. So let's say, oh yeah, okay. This thing here, I think you saw me shooting this when you came out. Is this the? the uh, um, is this the Hollow Sun one? Yeah, this is a joint effort between us and Halo Sun. Okay. And uh, this is probably one of my favorite optics. This is one that has ended up on a lot of my guns. And uh, I think is, I can tell you test-wise, it outperforms every dot. No question. I mean, it's, um, if you look at it durability-wise, uh, T1 by endpoint would probably be the top dot there. I mean, that's durability wise, mm -hmm. there would be a 10. So this thing would be about an 8. Okay. Uh, the difference is, is this has auto on, auto off. So it has 50,000 hours of continual use. But it only uses those 50,000 hours when you're actually moving the gun. If I put the gun up against the wall and it sits there, it will turn itself off. But as soon as I grab the gun, I mean, like, barely touch it. You don't have to hit it or anything. As soon as you pick up the gun, it automatically comes back on. A lot okay, of that's cool. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people don't know that it turns off because they, they've never seen it off. Um, yeah, it's to say, yeah, that, I think I was telling you that. I didn't realize you were telling me the other day that that thing turns off. I was like, really? <laughs> If you were to use it every day, every day for a whole, you know, every year for as long as you've had it, eight hours a day would last you like 17 uh, years of battery life. Okay. So that's, that's bananas. You know, you put, a, you put another one in your pack and you're, you're good to go for a long time. Uh, but the big advantage to it is not only like a standard dot, you get just the dot, right? So past 200 yards, it's, kind of hard to calculate the drop and the wind hold off. That's, that's the thing is that uh, you start getting into unknown distance using a standard dot, you're going to have to run into a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, this particular dot has bullet drop compensation that goes out to 600 yards. And uh, you use a chevron instead of a, a dot. That chevron gives you an infinite aiming point. So instead of having a, a two MOA dot where you're aiming with something this big, that kind of covers up what you're aiming at, you have a chevron tip and that tip allows you to be really accurate. Uh, the chevron also range estimates center mass at 300 and 400 yards. And is your, it allows you to reference as a, your wind hold off in any kind of like a five mile an hour crosswind. 
it would end up on the edges. I mean, all, all this stuff is kind of covered in the instructions, but long story short, it allows you to be making hits. You can run in CQB just as fast as anything else, but be able to hit steel out to like 600 yards. Yeah, so, which which we did, I think, in some videos. And by the way, right. you know, not, not everyone doesn't read the instructions. Uh, let me go to some <laughs> other questions. <laughs> let me go to some other questions. Walter, did you have something you wanted to ask? Um, no, I'm, I'm just taking it all in. I'm just listening. Oh, okay. The farm um, I did have one question here. Um, okay. And this actually came from Tyvin. Um, um, he, he's got to go to asking how many different scopes you actually offer. I mean, they probably offer a whole bunch of them. Yeah, and, uh, yeah and in, in that, is there, you guys do, do night vision or just straight up optics kind of uh, daylight stuff? Um, a few of the optics are night vision compatible, like the one by Platinum is night vision compatible. Compatible, but uh, we don't we don't make a night like a dedicated night vision scope. Yeah, with intensifier or anything like that. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah, and and I think I think Tyvin also wanted to know earlier whether or not um, you guys are considering giving people the ability to, to record and stuff like that in there. Are you are you guys considering all that getting that complicated? Yeah, I mean there. Primary Arms is one of the companies I work with. ACSS itself is, uh, you know, a reticle system that, you know, we work with Trigicon, we work with Halo Sun. So there's been talks about doing night vision. There's been talks about doing L cans. That's another one that we're looking very close at is an L can. So, yeah, I mean, we're you know, there's more stuff to come, and we're we're constantly looking at things to put it in. So. Okay. And I'm sure part of that go, you know, part of what goes on there is whether or not there's a market for it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a lot like with ACOGS, right? All the military law enforcement guys will, will drop that thousand bucks because if they do it for work, they need it to be, you know, as reliable as they can get. They need it. They need that. Uh, they're trained on, on that type of system uh, to where most people are not going to drop a thousand bucks on an optic, you know, and you get well, into a, not necessarily on a one and a half power optic. That's, I mean, I guess, you know, a 50 cal guy is not going to buy a one and a half power. No, not a 50 cal guy, but. Well, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, so. I mean, if you're, if you've got a Tavor or an AR-15 or, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm telling you guys that it seems funny, like, oh, one and a half, but I'm, I'm just telling you what's happening in the testing side of it. This thing rocks. <laughs> I mean, you know, Mike, Mike, I'm not going to yeah. talk about background, but these are some legit guys that we're, we're putting this thing together with. It's not a. a... And yeah, that's I the think thing. it all comes down to what level of understanding or what you think you might be going up against. You know, there's a whole bunch of factors here that come into play for different people. Of course, you know, the budget that they have is part, is part of the equation. I think Tyvin also wanted to know if you guys have like uh, military veteran um, discounts and things like that. Yeah, the Primary Arms does offer that. Uh, best thing to do is email info at primaryarms.com, and they'll, they'll help you out on that stuff. Okay. Uh, for the guys on the budget, the one by sixes, like what you got on the wall, you can't mm -hmm. beat it for money. You, there, there's just, for what you get, I mean, it's nuts. You know, yeah, uh, I, and I think it's like, um, you know, I mean, some people might go for a red dot, but if you're, if you've got like one rifle that you think you may have to do a bunch of things with, it's not too, you know, it's not bad. It's flexible. Well, I mean, as far as a red dot, the times, if you, if you drop that thing out one X and ran around your times with that in a red dot are not going to be a whole lot different. Mm -hmm. You should, you should try that out and see how that works out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have. And the thing is, it's like sometimes, though, if you're like Walter was saying, if you're an old dude or someone asked that question, you, you, you know, magnification helps. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the, the military uses a 4X for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. It's you need to be able to identify the target. If you got a guy in the prone position 300 yards out, you're not going to see him with a red dot. <laughs> you're you're, you're going to have to meet you're going to need magnification. Uh, especially with, with camouflage patterns nowadays, and those things disappear. So you need that, uh, you need target identification. That's number one. I mean, you detection. If you can't detect the target, you don't even know what you're about to shoot at. You don't even know it's there to begin with. So it goes like this. Number one, you need to find the target. Number two, you need to range estimate the target. And uh, 
you know, from there on is your, your, your uh, fundamentals of marksmanship and your wind hold off. Okay. Um, so we're talking a little bit here about long distance. Uh, Firearm Rack wants to know, um, can you talk about any of the upcoming reticles, um, anything geared towards ELR shooters, which uh, extreme long distance something shooters? Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, a there's been a, a big effort on my end to improve on the standard H59 that's in service, um, like a grid reticle by Horus. A lot of people think that Horus like came up with these reticles. These reticle, a grid type reticle has been uh, in service with the Russians for decades. I mean, that's not a, a new thing. Um, but uh, there's a, a few grids coming out that are, I don't know. I don't want to say revolutionary and change the game kind of thing, but they, they mathematically, yes, they are changing the game. Uh, the problem that you, what I'm talking about is like the grid Christmas tree type reticles. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason that those are uh, superior further out is because you don't have to deal with tracking. You know, not all scopes track 100%. Even the high-end ones that you're going to pay like three, four grand for doesn't mean when you input 10 mils that it's actually going to track down to the 10th mil mark. Very often they'll track off to the left or to the right or not equate to exactly 10 mils. So a grid, because there's no moving parts, as long as the reticle is etched right, when you say 10 mils, there's no moving parts. You're just moving the 10 mil mark on it. Uh, the, the problem that you run into with grids is that you have, picture the, cr the crosshair coming off the Christmas tree, and you have one crosshair and then the other one below it. Well, you have one mil spacing in between those. And I, I have figured out a way to solve that. We've gone away from the uh, crosshair marks and gone into dots and each one of these dots is placed within half a mil mark in every direction so the the closer that each one of your aiming points is together the less the brain has to figure out where to hold off or hold over okay it will it will, it will bring a much cleaner sight picture with a lot uh closer increments especially on the uh, uh bpr air moa so you have an moa mark on each tick um so, so yeah, this that, isn't going to have like the whole crosshair crazy thing going on. It's just going to be dots within the scope in different positions. You you get like a main crosshair, mm -hmm. right? and uh, off that crosshair, you're going to get a small dot for your half mil mark, a big dot for your full mil mark, a small dot for your half mil mark, and so on. Okay. And they're cor they're correlated to where if you say four mils down and you go four mils left, there's a four. So that four tells you you're four down, four left. So it's really easy to navigate. It kind of sounds crazy because we're on a video and you're not seeing it. But right, right, right. It's, uh, yeah, these things are gonna be pretty sweet. When, uh, when are those coming out? Uh, I don't know. They're, they're <laughs> saying February, but who knows? Right, okay. <laughs> It shouldn't be too long, but it's okay. coming in in a three by 18 and eventually will come in a six by 30 platinum. So the same, uh, you know, big, the same optic that you shot uh, at 600. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. so Hank comes out to shoot with me in the desert. Right. And uh, I don't know why, for some reason, I thought you weren't going to be able to shoot. Like, <laughs> you know, I, you, I don't know you watch my videos you're like this guy doesn't well, know, have a clue <laughs> well no i i just figured most of the shooting that you're doing is more like standing up you know what i mean uh -huh. more stand-up type shooting so he comes out and i kind of explain the reticle how it works and where to hold off and, and you know how to hold for when and so on and just goes bananas I, you didn't miss a single one at six right that was like your i'm yeah. sure I'm, I'm sure i missed something no you didn't Okay. Yeah, no, go back and check that out. So you went like five for five at 600, and you went five for five at four and actually printed yeah. a tiny little group. Uh, oh, with the, uh, with the magnifier? No, no, no. It was the six by 30. Oh, the six AR. By, oh, oh, okay, the six by 30. Okay, yes, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, okay. On my HUD more. Yeah. So, you know, that was your first time using that scope, that reticle. So there, yeah. there you go. Yeah, I don't think it's anything special about me. I think it's if you figure it out, <laughs> once you're like, oh, okay. 
you know, no, I can I mean, see all of this inside of the glass, then I think you, and then the rest of it probably comes down to your breathing and, you know, all no, that other kind of stuff. Look, the, the radical is great and all, but I mean, you did your part as a shooter. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Well, I try, I, I, you know what? I'll give you the whole 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, you, just, all right. you deserve it for making me look good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, that, that same scope you shot will have that grid reticle I was talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that that um that sounds interesting. Uh, someone wants to know if you've got any plans for a HUD DMR that's uh, BDC or bullet drop compensation based. Yeah, I mean that that the HUD DMR. The original had DMR and 308 has BDC in it, and it also has the mill system in it. So you can do a very quick firing solution, like all of a sudden there's a guy, figure out mm -hmm. how far he is and shoot. Or you can get into your actual mills and have an exact firing solution to where you're linked to a Kestrel and all mm -hmm. your environmentals and everything are, are linked. So now you could shoot an apple off his head kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, HUDs, not HUD DMRs, but just straight HUDs. Uh, DMR stands for designated marksman rifle. It's one guy out of a squad that's designed to shoot further out. Uh, the, so these will, will give you your bullet drop compensation out to a thousand yards and have a, a five, 10, 15 and 20 mile an hour hold off. Okay. And they'll, they'll come in different calibers. Okay. Um, Okay, also, any plans for an EOTech with ACSS reticle? <laughs> That's up to EOTech, right? I'm going to assume. No. We, I no. was actually, we were working on it with EOTech. We were going to do an ACSS EOTech. And uh, we weren't in green on certain things, price-wise, between them. Mm -hmm. And uh, next thing we knew, they're getting sued by the U.S. government. So, <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that whole thing went down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if 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 they got their. Uh, what was happening is they had thermal drift, so as the optic would get hot or cold, your point of impact okay. would shift around. So if if they got that straightened out, you know, and that kind of thing, we would be open to something. Yeah, but, does it, didn't um, EOTech go back to the drawing board and and like uh, in terms of their branding and everything? Because I think now. Aren't they just coming out with different kinds of scopes and, and, and all that now? Did they change their direction? I don't know. They, oh, okay. They out, when, when we dealt with them, a lot of my math got released to them. Um, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they came out with a one by six that auto ranges <laughs> these. <laughs> but mm -hmm. hey, I, I have like, I'm a type of person that I'm, I'm like respectful and nice to everybody. And uh, when people cross me over, there's like this bad karma that happens to them. So maybe that's why they got sued by the government. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tango Hunter wants to know any plans to bring back the fixed four times scope? Any reason um, for the change to three? The six what? Any plans to bring back the fixed four times scope? Whoa. And he wants to know if there's a reason why you guys changed to three instead of four. So the Forex Prism actually is back. Like if you go on the Primary Arms website, they have it sometimes listed as blems. And uh, you, you can find the Forex still here and there. Uh, I don't know why they got rid of that Forex. That Forex was sweet. Um, not that the 3X isn't sweet. I mean, the 3X and the 5X are awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say the 3 and the 5 are probably a little bit more durable, which is crazy because the Forex is like, if you guys want durable optics, like a poor man's ACOG kind of thing, our prisms are the way to go. I mean, these things are nuts. Same with that one by six you got back there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of torture tests and a lot of stuff to try to break those things. A lot of people won't torture test $2,000 optics, right? <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they have to buy it. Well, yeah. If, yeah. Yeah. So if it's someone's... Really, they gave the test stuff they don't pay for, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If someone uh, if someone gives you the uh, super expensive optics or says, "Hey, if you break it, we'll fix it," torture you test the living daylights out of it. I'll drive yeah. over it with yeah. a truck for crying out loud. <laughs> right. You know, we'll run a tank over it and see how tough it is. Um, how tough should you expect a, uh, an optic to be? Like in, in well, all seriousness. One, that one by six back there will probably outlast that gun. Okay. 
Um, if you follow Rob over at AK Operators Union, mm -hmm. Rob Ski, got that, yeah, mm -hmm. you know what he does the stuff. I mean, it's nuts. Yeah. Uh, initially, when we sent it off to him, everybody told me don't send it. He's gonna fucking break it. <laughs> He's gonna drag it behind. <laughs> yeah, the yeah we're talking, but we're talking about Rob Ski here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> My whole thought process is if it breaks, cool, let's dissect it and find out what broke and make that part better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we were still at prototype phasing. So we sent it off to him. And next thing I know, he's like dragging it behind a car. And I'm like, yeah, holy crap. Go. Yeah. Sitting in the water. And so he's had a 3X now that he's, he has it in all his videos. I mean, God, he must have 20 some thousand rounds through this thing by now. Okay, so with the with the one that he drug behind the car and everything, it, it didn't do any damage to it, right? I'm su I'm sure it scratched it up and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean he he scratched it up. It's why he puts tape on it. Mm -hmm. uh, what he dragged behind the car too was our micro dot, and that ended up breaking the glass because he's dragging and it's hitting rocks and stuff. So eventually that broke, but it still illuminates. Or no, did it break? I think it cracked, but it held zero and it kept going. Okay, so it's still usable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, you guys, the, the, the optics that you used to get in the past, you know, uh, coming out of China that were airsoft and breaking and that kind of thing, that's, that's not what this is. There's only two or three factories in China that make a, a good quality product. And pretty much everybody in the industry from Vortex to Burris to all these big names deal with them. I mean, that's, and uh, our stuff comes out of the exact same factories to the exact same specs. I mean, they're, you're just paying less. You're paying less and you're getting a better reticle and that's been calibrated. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. So. Walter, did you have something? No, no, I'm just, I'm still listening. Like I said, it's a, I know the EOTech problem. They had a problems with Q, their main problem was the QC thing. We're changing the, the, um, from hot and cold and all that, but, um, a lot of their stuff is made over there too, from what I heard, um, in China that is. And I, I guess maybe some was saying that some of it was and some of it wasn't, and it really was, and maybe got in trouble for that a little bit too. I don't know. I, I didn't, I didn't hear of that. But to have okay. parts made there and sent somewhere else to be assembled, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. The 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 notion that people think that because it's in, made in China, it's crap is nuts. I mean, where do you think your iPhone stuff comes from? Or your, I mean, they're making stealth fire. All the phones, yeah. There's no phone, no matter what yeah. phone you're into. There's no phone made in America. If it was made in America, it would be ten thousand dollars. Right. Well, the the secret well. to getting stuff out of out of China and getting excellent quality is uh, one: you have to have the right companies that you deal with, which we do. But the terms of contract, if anything, if any of these scopes break, they go back to them. They got to pay for it. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. If they have to pay for it and they have to warranty it. Guess what? I mean, the, the, the defect rates on that one by six you got back there and these micro dots and stuff are like literally up there with all the top end stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, also, someone has to keep an eye on what they're doing, right? Um, that's what I see the companies, the better companies that build things in China or anywhere overseas, they're always checking up on those companies to, to verify what they're making. We, we go out there once a year and we pull samples and test them all the time. I mean, as you know, I'm out in the desert literally every day. I shoot every single day and uh, not only product develop, but test stuff that we have. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but really, I mean, here, here's the deal is that if we start getting defects and bad batches, they know we're going to go to the other factory instead of them. Right. So what's happened is they've, they've increased not only their QC, but their, a lot has to do with the uh, adhesives that you use to put these scopes together. Mm -hmm. So they've gone to like an M3 adhesive, and these, these things can go nuts. I mean, it's why they hold up on a foul or, or a scar. Okay. Um, and... <laughs> You, you know, um, so you're trying to tell me that in China, capitalism is at work? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, with a, with, a little, with a little bit of a whip behind it. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. So let me just go over this real quick. Uh, Giles Henry Michael Jr. wants to know, and I know we've talked about this before, but I think it is a good thing to go over again. 
Uh, he wants to know what are the advantages slash disadvantages of first focal and second focal plane reticles? Uh, so on a front focal plane, your reticle changes. So as you, as you zoom in, the reticle gets bigger. As you zoom out, it gets smaller. Uh, so the disadvantage to that is if you're used to picking it up and seeing one particular sight picture, well, that mm -hmm. sight picture can vary depending on what magnification you're on. To where a second focal plane, as you pick it up, no matter what magnification you're on, the reticle remains the same. Uh, uh, a front focal plane, the bullet drop compensation will be true in all magnifications. So whether you're at three power or six power or whatever, the, the drops will be correct. On a second focal plane, in order for the drops and all that to be correct, you have to be all the way to the full power, which would be, let's say, six. A lot of people have the misconception that because the BDC is only true at six, that the scope is somehow worthless on the other magnifications, which is not true. Your uh, chevron point or dot or whatever the, the reticle has in it, that aiming point stays true in all magnifications. So just like how you would... Uh, if let's say you shot out to 200 yards, no matter what magnification you're on, it would still drop two minutes about this much. Oh, okay. So zero, zero to 300, you're good to go no matter what magnification you're on. It, it's past 300 where you really need to zoom in and get to six, which you would be at that power anyways. Okay, and then so, the, so with the uh, front focal plane, a lot of times those are the more affordable Budget ones and second, the second or the little bit more expensive higher end, or does that not really make a difference there? The the other way around. The other way around. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What we're what we're known for is uh, we put out a four by fourteen that's in front focal plane mm -hmm. for two seventy nine, which is nuts, and that has the HUD DMR reticle. Uh, we entered the Chris Powell sniper competition with a two hundred and seventy nine dollar optic with the HUD DMR reticle and uh beat everybody out and made it into the finals okay so you know the guys that show up at the chris kyle sniper comps are like uh, seals and rangers and and top top tier snipers i mean they're you know mm -hmm. and, uh, and that, that's kind of proof that it, it's like i said before the brain of the scope is the reticle and it's the reticle that allowed us to do that mm -hmm. um from go ahead well, I was going to say Ken from Insane Accuracy was the shooter, and he did his part. You know, my hat's off to Ken. He had to hit an eight-inch plate at eight hundred, another eight-inch plate at a thousand. So he indexed in point three mils for the current conditions, and the bullet drop compensation it became true down to the thousand-yard BDC mark. That's how he's hitting an eight-inch plate. So a lot of people have a misconception that a bullet drop compensation cannot be used in uh, precision. That, that's not true. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, muted. Okay, quick little break here. Um, Forge from Freedom just jumped in and gave us 10 bucks. That's our friend Sam from Forge from Freedom. He says, hey, Dimitri, do you speak Greek? And uh, Dimitri, forgive me because I'm going to totally butcher your your native tongue right now. <laughs> if, I don't know if you do speak Greek or not. He says, Yesau ti kanis kala. I don't know what that means. That's, how are you doing? I, is everything good? Oh, okay. So I was awesome then. Yeah, I speak <laughs> You do? Okay. So I, I know you, you were born here, right? Right. Did you spend a lot of time going back to Greece? Visiting, uh, hanging went, out with the grandparents and stuff? Yeah, I've spent a few years in Greece. I lived in Greece for a bit, you know, on and off kind of thing. Oh, okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, my, my mom spoke Greek. My dad spoke Greek. English was a second language to them. Cool. So I, I grew up, you know, speaking both. Yeah. Um, actually, Sam, I think I believe that Sam has a, a Greek background as well. I know he lived there for some time. So, um, by the way, Guns and Gear channel was in there. So shout out or I don't know if he's still here. I think he is. Um, but Guns and Gear said uh, shout out to Guns and Gear. He says once you get the ACSS system, it's um, rough to miss on a lot of rifles uh, within 500 yards. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think that's the thing. Like, once you understand how the ACSS works, listen, you guys can buy whatever you want. Like, one of the reasons why I like this so much is because it's easy for me to figure it out. You know, yeah, I, mean, I don't have to retain a whole bunch of information in my brain. Yeah. Yeah, 
it's all like half of the half of the stuff is fantasy. These guys, a lot of people they'll get a ballistic app and they think that all of a sudden they know how to calculate trajectories and it doesn't work like that. Even if you do know how to do a trajectory, you still have to calibrate to the optic itself. There's a mm -hmm. lot of stuff that goes into it. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to let me do it all for you, and all you got to do is dial in at 100 yards, and the reticle does the rest. You don't have to. You don't have to worry about all that crap. Not only that, but you don't have to have a data book. You don't have to have a, a, for in a combative use. You don't have to have a laser range finder. You know, all, all that stuff is on the class and ready to go. Mm -hmm. So, think of the uh, PSO RCO concept, but brought to 2017 and beyond. I mean, we. we when we design these things, we're not trying to do Gen 2, Gen 3. We're, we're trying to go way ahead and think way ahead to what, if the competition were to start knocking us off, how far could, you know, how far can we get to where even if they knocked us off, they couldn't because they'd be under direct violation of the patents. All right, cool. Um, it seems like there's some discussion of Rob Ski in the chat. Some people like Rob Ski, some people don't like Rob Ski, <laughs> or some people disagree <laughs> with his methods. <laughs> well, I'd be one that kind of, you know, I watch it and I go, dragging it behind a truck, really? Well, oh, I, I know what that does. I know what it does, but it's like, who's going to drag their scope behind a truck? You know, gonna... Well, I mean, here, here's the thing it, it simulates if you were to take a scope and a gun and drop it, right? Well, mm -hmm. he's dropping it a thousand times for you by dragging it in the back of the car. It's like bouncing around. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I think some of his tests are like super crazy, right? Um, yeah. But a lot of his, I think, I honestly think he has the best testing out in the market, period. Uh, when he started doing the 5,000 round count, that's huge because mm -hmm. we learned a lot. Uh, an AR-15 is far more reliable than people think it is. Uh, oh, absolutely. An AK, an AK is more accurate than people think. Yes, it can be. So, yeah. And so, and so, we, so that being said, are you, if you had to choose one, are you AK <laughs> or AR 15? Uh, it depends on what I'm doing. Uh, okay. I, I said, if you, okay, it depends um, on what you're doing. Uh, well, if, 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 uh, if all hell broke loose and we went all zombie alien apocalypse right now, and you're le and you've got to leave the house. Which one? Which ones are you? What do you grab? An AK or AR? Oh, probably an AR. Okay. So then, yeah. under what circumstances would you go to the AK? Where do you think the AK really shines? The AK is really good at uh, if you don't have you know any kind of oil, any kind of cleaning, that kind of thing. No support. Uh, the 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 one, and it's a it's. It goes both ways. With an AK, let's say you got mud and crap in it, right? Mm -hmm. I can pop open that dust cover and clean it out with some water, and all of a sudden the thing will start to run again. Mm -hmm. But if you were to take both guns and start doing crap to them, throwing dirt and stuff, and I mean both on the firing position, closing your dust cover on an AK and throwing shit on it does not mean that that gun is reliable. It needs to be on the firing position to where the lever is now open. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's it's interesting what happens once you start getting crap in an AK. It, it will go down just like any other gun. Um, the big plus to an AR-15, let's say something broke on my AR-15, I can pop that pin out and replace whatever part it is in five minutes. If you have the parts, you yeah. If you mm -hmm. have the parts. If yes. you have the parts. Yeah, yeah I mean, you mm -hmm. have a part kit in your pack. I, I keep a little, a little yeah. kit for all my parts in, in my pack. Yeah. It doesn't weigh anything. Um, to where an AK, that thing goes down, well, you're now, you know, that's that's a different story. Yeah. So it, it give and take. I don't care for the ergonomics of an AK. Um, it's, uh, you know. It's more primitive. To, yeah, I mean, I created a whole part. I created the Weapon Tech Bolt Hold Open Follower. And what that does, it keeps the bolt open on the last round. Yeah. And uh, people are kind of hung up. Because when you fire the last round and you take the mag out, the bolt slams forward. Well, I didn't create the part to turn an AK into an AR-15. Uh, <laughs> no, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> That's what you should have magically done. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, you, know who's, you know who actually did that is Chase over at Definitive Arms. Uh, I got a couple of Saigas that he converted over that take PMAGs. 
keep the bolt open and bolt release like an AR. They're they're pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah, that's um, but, yeah, that's something. But that what, I, I think Chase is one of the few people who can do that. You know, Chase is is at um, he's with Copper Custom or uh, Copper Custom and Definitive Arms have like a thing going on now. I think Chase is in um, Indiana. I want to say I think I think Chase is the best AK guy in the country right now. No, like you know what I mean. And okay, I'm, I'm, is that all? Is that all around, or in terms of innovation? I know he's definitely pushing innovations and stuff like that. Look, there, there's a lot of. It can't, well, I don't want to get into this. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, you're not. No one's going to hold anything that you say against you. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we try to get. Yeah, trust me. You can't. Listen, look, we have Patrick R. Okay, Patrick Roberts. He's about to come in here. Trust me, you can. You know, you're not going to cause more trouble than him. He he really wants to. He's Jones in. He's a he's an optic yeah. nerd, so he's Josing to get in on this conversation. Um, so I wanted to let him do it. And before I do that, just really really quick, I want to remind everyone to click the thumbs up and share this video. Now we got Patrick R. We got Dimitri. Got me and Walter in here. Warsaw Patriot says he really disagrees with Rob Ski. <laughs> And then Mr. Holster, oh. shout out to Mr. Holster. He said, "I really like Robski." <laughs> no, I, I like I like the way I like the way he shoots the guns and yeah. and all that. I just I just didn't like the, I just don't like that overly abusive stuff that you doesn't, know, doesn't but, really happen in the real world. So, but you know what's crazy? You were the, you remember the other day you were chastising me because you said that um, you don't ever do the remember that finish that you said you don't like? Oh, the people? distress finish? Yeah, I don't yeah, like said, that. If you want to distress your gun, use it. Yeah. Okay. So that's what you said. Right. You said if you want to distress the gun, use it. But then, right. but you don't necessarily. I mean, this he's he's doing. He's putting the gun under extreme oh, he's use. It, that's for sure. Yeah, he's <laughs> distressing the crap out of it for real. And I think that I, think I watched it. I, I I was watching it about the sentry gun. I was watching it, watching it, watching it, watching it because yeah. I have a sentry gun. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to see how bad it got. So. Yeah, I'm not, not saying like everyone should go do that. I'm not saying that, but uh, no. but he's but he's taking you know Rob Ski's putting he's putting himself out there and doing all that work and testing the gun and finding like who knows where the hell you know ammo and all that's coming from. And I think it's yeah. valid data, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go uh, go ahead, Dimitri. We'll let Dimitri go, and then we'll let Patrick go. Well, I was just saying on on the century gun. It, I mean, he's he's he put the five thousand rounds through it. I don't, I don't, I didn't see him drag it or anything like that. I mean, it was more of just shooting it, right? Yeah, no, that's that's really kind of how it played out. Uh, I think it was more along the lines of he shot it to death, uh, well, <laughs> which apparently didn't take very long. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, a, a, gun, a gun that can't handle five thousand rounds is not a gun you want to depend on. If it's right. your, like, if you, you know, I think that, I think it's valid data for people out there to ask themselves a question. If you're the guy that's buying an AK so you can say, oh, look, I got this AK, and you're not even going to do 500 rounds, then it's no big deal, nope. right? If right. it could go to 5,000, it's no big deal. If you know that you'll go to 1,000, if you know you'll go to 2,000 or 3,000, well, you know, then so it's no big deal. But if you, if you, if if you know that you're going to go to 5,000 or you're going to use this to train or you're going to depend on your life with this thing and all that, it's a data point you might want to know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, mean, so I think that's the whole point. And like, I know Walter said that like he's being overly abused from the rifles. One that's 100% for science. It has nothing to do with real world applicability or not. Um, I want to know whether or not I can drag my truck my rifle behind a truck if it's the gun that I'm going to pick up when the zombie gnomes come and attack. Like, that's... <laughs> the zombie gnomes. That's Walter <laughs> New Patch, zombie gnomes. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. Yes. And you <laughs> better give Patrick it. credit. <laughs> yeah, I, I want the gnomes to all have red beards. Oh, God. That's all I'm asking. Um, <laughs> ginger gnomes. Anyway, yeah, so, like, if that's the rifle that you're seeking out, if, you, if you're buying that one rifle... Like the dude that's going to go to the store and buy that RAS 47 or he's going to buy that PSA AR, he's not going to spend the time tearing that gun up because it's a large investment for him. We need guys like Robski to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think no, this is, go ahead. The biggest thing I watch about not so much the stocks falling off and all that stuff, because that'll happen to any gun. You do it enough. But the uh, the bolt head deformant, you know, the way the bolt deforms and, the, and things like that. That's right. important stuff. 
because if it fails in your face, you know, then it's, you have a really bad day. So yeah, 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 I, and I don't think you get innovation. Like one of the things, like the reason why I'm trying to get Dimitri to to come on and talk about stuff is because, like, okay, so everyone's out there buying optics. You can you can go cheap on optics. You could go expensive on optics. Are you really like pushing it and using it? Right. And for me, if I don't know anything, I need someone who's actually doing that. Like Dimitri shoots every day at long distance, right? Dimitri, yeah. I think you're shooting every day. Yeah, I mean, not not just long distance. I just shoot. I mean, I, I yeah. go easy, probably at least a thousand rounds a week or something. Maybe a little bit more. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, so you need something. that data. I mean, so that's so so like for me, the way I look at it, like this is someone I could ask. So if so, like for a dude like Rob Ski that's doing that, um, I think it's a good thing because you can like I want to know like which guns. So if there was a more expensive gun that could that could last that long, I would go, OK, maybe I'll buy it. But maybe there's a gun that's not that expensive and it lasted longer. That's still a data point I want to know. I don't necessarily want to pay for the more expensive gun for some reason when it can't, you know, go that far if that's what's important to me. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I can tell you guns that I've had, God, I don't even know how many rounds I have. It's nuns. Uh, or Saigas by Ishmash. Those are made in the same factory as, I mean, the, that factory has been making military rifles since World War II. One, uh, the, the women, it's actually assembled by women, and those women have been there for like 30 years plus. They can do this thing in their sleep. It's nuts. Right, right. But uh, the metal allergy they use, the... Uh, geometry as far as the feeding the, uh, the I, i've never had a like like people say i've never had a malfunction that's because you're not really shooting this thing so I, yeah. i've shot the things a lot and i can think of like two or three malfunctions through, throughout everything it's been through is i mean that that's pretty good i think the secret is they kind of over gas the gun so no matter what it's extracting it's blow it out yeah yeah mm. Okay, but uh, the way you the one of the first things you'll start to see going out in an AK is you'll see deformation on your uh, on your bolt on the back. There's a little hump right there, and you'll you'll see that flattening out. And uh, also the the bolt itself will start to kind of chip away and, and get all kinds of weird cuts and stuff in it. So Saigas, I highly highly recommend them. Okay. They're banned. We can't get them anymore. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, thing. yeah. Same with Vepers. Vepers are excellent. We we can't get them anymore. Um, the only uh, thing that still get some of them. Can you? Yeah, yeah I saw uh, Vepers. Prime still had some. Yeah, I think I've seen a couple. Of, I don't know where they're coming from. If they were already in the country, but I know uh, there's a couple like Vepper twelves and stuff like that out there. Some of the places are they 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 received them that were in transit when the the ban yeah. stuff happened. So, yeah. but yeah. because it because of the uh, glut of everything right now. They, it took a long time to sell them all. Yeah, that's if, true. If it would have been like back there when, when things were crazy, they wouldn't have lasted a week and they would have been gone. So that, that shows you how slow the industry is right now when those, yeah. those guns lasted two months. Yeah, because a lot of people, I haven't really seen the prices kick up on them either. Yeah. You know, It's not like there's some Vepers and things like that out there, but you don't see anyone going, and this is $5,000. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I, I paid... That one I bought right after the ban, I paid eight something for from Centerfire, and their price stayed the same till it ran out. So, yeah, which is fortunate. This is still a, for for gun guys wanting to buy guns. This is still a good market. Oh, so yeah. you know what? Let's. Uh, I'm going to ask this question, and then I know Patrick came in, so we could geek out about stuff. We got Dimitri here. We need to ask him about optics. Uh, Mary Malone wants to know what does Primary Arms recommend for the Scar 17? I have one. Yeah, what do you recommend? Well, it, if you're on a budget, that one by six in the back, like I was saying, uh, it, it's one of the very few optics, and not just by our brand, just any brand, that will actually handle that kind of uh, 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 recall impulse that comes back and forth on it. Um, so, and, and uh, the, the ACOGs by Trigicon, but those are expensive. So it, it depends yeah. on your point. Best bang for the uh, buck are all those fixes. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, like you said. It depends on the budget. So I know if like some people out there, if they have a scar and they go to the range, they don't want to have an FN scar and like a what they call a budget optic on there. They want to oh, impress dear. all their friends that they also oh, have the trigger gun. <laughs> God forbid. Not, okay, okay, that seems silly, but it happens. I right? know, I know, I know. It's like an HK guy going over there with a 
with a NC Star yeah. scope on it, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember one time I was in the range and there was this guy who only buys FNs. So he has no gun that's not FN. <laughs> well, he don't have very many guns then, does he? No, he had a bunch of guns, but they were all. Yeah, no, but not as many as I do. <laughs> no, but you know he, but but people are like that. that I know, that I sounds. know. Some people got to drive a Chevy or they walk, right? <laughs> yeah, I know that sounds crazy, but you know, so one time some hostility towards FN there. Yeah, one time this guy, I was at, um, I was hanging out with um, Sam Andrews that makes the leather holsters, and this guy was like razzing me because he says that um a glock is a ghetto ass gun <laughs> well that's what he was saying he was like yeah man you gotta get better i'd like i'd like to i'd like to live in gas and glocks a uh, ghetto have you seen I, his, have you seen his ghetto yeah i don't worry <laughs> i don't worry about dudes like that because a lot of times when dudes are talking all that nonsense i don't care what brand is throwing lead at me yeah yeah yeah. You know, I don't think it really matters. And if you know what, what you could have a high point, and if you know how to use it, you're dangerous. No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want you shooting at me with a high point. Yeah. So. Yeah. Did you yeah. guys see uh, uh, Mike's video, Mr. Guns and Gear? I think it was on Instagram. Uh, it's some guy, and he has some, I don't know what freaking Glock trigger this is, but he, he upgraded to some Glock trigger, and when he puts it in the holster, the gun oh, fire. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, that's yeah. on his. That's on his Instagram today. I've been on the road all day. I, yeah, what was up with that? What was the guy who was stuffing it in his right by his thing and it, it, and he shot himself? No, no, no. It, well, it's an empty. It's the gun is empty. Oh, right. but uh, you can hear the disconnector going off. I mean, it's it's. Whoa. Oh. If there was a round in there, he would have shot himself right in the nuts. You know? Yeah. <laughs> wow. No. What trigger is that? Yeah, now we all have to go. Let's go look at Guns and Gears Instagram. Oh, I don't know if I even want to see how close this dude came to being dudeless. Uh, the gun is clear. He cleared the gun. Okay, hold on. Yeah, yeah. He, I'm looking up. I'm looking up Guns and Gear right now. But it was. Yeah, it's like. Post. No, that's okay. So you got two followers Instagram. I'm gonna have to. I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, yep, it's a Zug trigger. I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, and he just gently puts it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Fabush has like more info on his page. Ooh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah. Do you have first? Did you guys ever oh. see the, uh, uh, you know, a military arms channel? Tim do the, uh, you know, he does the torture test on the handguns. Yeah, yeah the gauntlet. Yeah, the, I think that's some excellent, excellent testing. And a lot of people have talked crap, but I mean, I, I think he's doing a great job because it's, it's controlled. You get to see what's going to happen mm -hmm. with every one of the elements and so on. Mm -hmm. So it, it's funny to see these big names choke, even coming out of water. Hydro locking, mm -hmm. and then you see that a high point. He kind of, you know, he made it go through, but the damn thing made it through. You know? <laughs> Wait a second, when did he do the high point one? I missed that. Oh, it's it's awesome. It, Was it's this awesome. recently that he did the high point? I, I saw him do uh, a bunch of different stuff. I didn't realize he did a high point one. That one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A couple months. <laughs> yeah, I got to go back now through his thing. But yes, I think. See, that's another thing. I think it's a good thing that he's doing that. You know, Max is in a position um, for a couple of different reasons to be able to get his hands on all, you know, on all those guns and then and then put it through it. And I think it's good information. I, you know, I watch those whenever I can. Yeah, I, I would have loved to have seen him do the, those gauntlet tests inside of a decent holster. Because that's what I really care about. I don't give a crap about what the gun's going to do by itself in mud. I want to know how it's going to react inside of a decent Kydex holster. Oh, oh okay. So, yeah, you want to see him add, the add like, what, holster and stuff like that to it? No, yeah, no, yeah. Put Leave the gun inside of a holster and then mm -hmm. do his little gauntlet test. Because that's where the gun lives. That's where it's most likely to be whenever you fall into that mud hole or whatever. Hmm. You know? Well, I, I think... Part of it is, let's say you draw the gun and now you're wrestling for the gun, and then oh, you the drop it. Yeah. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would have liked to see it like some of the guns. I would have liked to see them loaded, but the hammer pulled back and not dropped forward. Right? Okay. Because if you're wrestling for it, one and a round goes off or whatever, 
and now the gun hits the ground with the with the hammer back, what happens then? <laughs> Okay, very good. Very good. I think we should invite uh, Max to come on, and then we should all tell him our different requests. I want to see him. I want to see him in a mohawk. <laughs> I want to see him cut his hair to a mohawk. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Some of us uh, folks don't have enough hair for that. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, okay. Let me not say what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, now I'm just jealous of the beard. That's all. Okay, so let's let's talk optics here. So yeah. obviously we got Patrick R. Patrick came on. Patrick Roberts, he's on here. He wanted to. So what was it you wanted? What questions were we not handling well enough for you, sir? No, yeah, you were like legitimately making me angry. I went and got seconds for dinner, and I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill Hank. Uh, <laughs> my wife could hear me getting mad. Uh, no, I wanted to talk a little bit more. You were. Dimitri, you were talking about a new ACSS reticle that you're going to utilize dots at half mil increments and build out a grid underneath the center line. Is that what I'm getting? Uh, no, it's more of a, a main set crosshair, right? So your, your standard spine of a crosshair, yeah. if you will. And then there are dots coming off to the left and right. Okay, so the dots are going to be um, kind of like the Collis AMR reticle? No, the callus the callus is more of a, a 0.20 of a mil. Right. So you end up yeah. with a square, right? So picture here's the square. Right. Now imagine having to aim in that square. Okay. So now look at what I'm doing here. Here's the square, right? I don't know if you can look at the screen. Yeah. Oh, you are looking at a screen. So picture the yeah, square. Yeah, yeah. And now you're aiming in the middle of that square. Well, you're not aiming with anything. You're, you're, you're holding into the middle of space. You got one mil in each direction. You follow me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. so what this thing will be, the dots will be half a mil increment in any way. So you can quarter mil or, or beyond. I mean, you can get as, as crazy as you want with it. The, uh, the point uh, is the further away. Okay, so let's say this is one of your aiming points and this is the other. So let's say like that square. This aiming point to that aiming point is a full mil away. So if you're holding in the center of it, you're kind of guessing of how far to hold. So because these are half mil increments, you're the the closer away you're you're holding, the the better your brain can calculate the uh, yeah, okay. the smaller increments. The Eris uh, is actually one moa. A half a mil is one point seven one nine of a of a moa. Uh, the the errors will be one MOA, so it's even closer. You're talking about every minute of angle, uh, an increment that you can subdivide into ten. So that this thing should be uh, pretty sweet. I, I got a prototype in, and we're testing it out to a mile plus, and it's like right exactly where I want it to be. I mean, th this thing will yeah, be pretty. I'm, sweet. Gonna, I'm gonna have to reach out to Mike over at Primary Arms see if he has another prototype for me to play with. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> now, what are you, shooting a mile? What are you actually shooting? What 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 caliber? What what? So here's what's Good going question. on at a mile, right? Um, a lot of these calibers that everyone kind of raves about, and they think that it's the greatest thing ever, and blah blah blah. Yeah. They don't. I, I think I just heard six five Creedmoor there. Yeah, like six point five Creedmoor, right? That's <laughs> once you get out to a mile, the round goes uh, subsonic. Oh, I don't know. I forgot. It, what it, hits, it hits trans at 1500 uh, at my elevation. Right. And then what ends up happening is that your the, the angle of the attack of the bullet will change and it will start to go through that buffer zone. And then you got them. You're okay. So I, I'm spotting and I, I see splash two mils left. So I tell you, correct two mils left. Now you mm -hmm. put that point on target and you shoot. It doesn't go there. <laughs> Gonna go one mil right or one mil, you know what I mean? So it's okay. just variable, it's just wobbling. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're kind of changing uh, around trying to get it on. I guess maybe kind of like telling everybody out there in uh, that's watching kind of maybe what transonic does to a bullet might be helpful because I, I think they might understand why it's doing that a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a it picture like the. You've gone supersonic and you've gone past the, the buffer zone. When, when you go transonic or you start hitting a transonic flight, that buffer zone starts to creep up Catch on the bullet and then you go subsonic and it, and it starts to mess with it. So, yeah, uh, but like um, three, three. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. 
I was just going to say, like a 3 3 Lapua, it's like you shoot, let's say you missed half a mil, you direct that half a mil and you shoot, the next round is going to go there. Unless so that's the wind... what you, is that what you're using to do these tests with, yeah. or is it okay? Yeah, I, I put a video oh. up a couple, like a last week of a mile shot we did. Oh, with, uh, you're, uh, using, uh, you're using this reticle or? No, no, no. I'm using the uh, six by thirty on that. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, because you're because you're testing the new reticle, so we're not going to see it. Because I know you do very like detailed videos and how the reticles work, and you try to show us uh, what's going on with the reticle. But that's not coming out anytime soon, right? Well, I don't know, man. They they, they keep telling us around February, but like I said, I, you know, you know. Okay, but you can't put out any videos about how the reticle works until then. No. Yeah. Not not a whole lot of people even know about it yet. I mean, oh, okay. So. All right, so that's still yeah, kind mean, of like under embargo. Yeah, it's it, so here's what happens. One, it's like all this stuff, once our patent attorneys are done and all that, then we start letting some people know in, within the company. Okay. Uh, and then typically we don't tell customers about it because we get a flood of calls coming huh. in. Customers when I got to get it? When can I get it? When can I get it? It's like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Or how does it work? So, yeah. uh, about a month ago, everybody was like, what the hell is the ACSS Raptor? Nobody even knew about it, you know? So they're, they're getting calls yeah. about it. And so, so you guys are going now to, I noticed you said you have the Raptor, you have the Predator. You guys are going to like like names now. Yeah, it, uh, it, it's much easier to look up a certain name of an optic and find it. So. Yeah, we got Babyface P is in the, yeah. is in the Hangout. Yeah, man. Uh -oh. no, I'll agree with you on that. Um, yeah, I was just looking at that video, you're doing the one mile shot. Uh, can't it, it looks like a nice rig you got there like that. that's the which let me see which video is that let me go to the channel because i know uh, you were telling yeah, me yeah. about this this is um let me see on on pro so this is on primary arms the youtube channel right yeah that's where i'm looking at it yeah there was one on instagram too we actually shot out to 2000 after that and uh I ended up running out of room on the uh, elevation and having to hold over uh, two and a half mils on the 2,000 yard one. Mm. Yeah, so you'll appreciate this uh, shooting a, three, a uh, 338 out to 2,000. Um, here in next month, the beginning of the month, I'm going to be getting behind a rifle and giving 4,000 yards a shot alongside of several other like pro shooters uh, with the Ritter and Stark uh, SX-1. And are you, are you guys like shooting and doping it out? Or are you linked to a Kestrel or how are you? I have no idea. I don't know what the setup is yet. Like I just got looped into the project like three days ago. So, so here's the thing with all this stuff, right? Uh, some guys like they'll shoot out to a mile or whatever and they'll shoot it and the spotter will kind of walk them into it. And then like that's, yeah. you know, and now they're shooting a mile. Oh, okay. Well, what, what, we're, what I'm doing is running the ballistic data and actually cold bore and hitting so on so uh that that's kind of the name of the game is can you get on there within the first couple of rounds you know what i mean because right. yeah, because if you're shooting at things that shoot back at you and you start shooting and you're just going they're going to run off you know basically i mean that's the they're gonna, yeah they're going to duck their head they're going to hide <laughs> and you don't get to see them anymore and and, right. and you know by by no means am i like some it's still it's a lot of work or, it's a major task yeah oh yeah you got to chronograph your load and you got to catch the yeah the curve of how it is when it's a hot low, hot day, cold day, and so on, the direction of fire, you can go crazy with it. But once you gather all that madness together, your firing solution becomes uh, pretty good. Yeah, you gotta put that matrix in your brain of how to do it. By the way, uh, Highway Run 77 just gave us five bucks. His comment is, his, his comment is, great show tonight. Great show tonight, so there you go. Ooh. Thanks, what, are, what are you using for um, ballistic data? What kind of, are you using a, uh, something like geoballistics, using Kestrel? Um, I, I, we're, really what we're doing is uh, like the – yeah, I'd rather not talk about some of the stuff because I'm going to talk <laughs> about a bunch of companies and, and how their stuff <laughs> out, right? I mean, talk about what you like. Just leave the stuff that you don't like out of it. <laughs> What I really like, kind of what I'm getting into now, is what uh, Rex does from Rex Reviews. And what they've gone to is more of a, a, an analog sheet. And that's kind of what I'm trying to learn from him now. Nice. They're, they're kind of 
taking not only your, uh, you know, your basic environmentals and so on, but the powder burn rates, the, uh, the temperature of the ammunition, uh, it, it, all that stuff, it's all kind of calculated in an analog form. So that's, that's really what I'm trying to move to is something like that, because uh, I don't have to worry about batteries. You know what I mean? It's a completely analog system. No, that makes sense. Makes sense. Because um, yeah, I was looking at the HUD DMR, which looked like it's the closest thing to um, like the, the, the Christmas tree type reticles that you get for PRS use. No. I'm trying to figure out how to. No, the, the HUD DMR oh. is, uh, was originally designed for the M110. It was the XM110 back there. It's based off the LR118. The... Right, right. The military is not dealing with 20 different, you know, 308 loads. They're dealing with one. So it's calibrated for that load, and it's got a bullet drop compensator. So if you look at it, it's bullet dropping out to 1,000 yards. And then within the reticle, you've got no marks. So it, it allows you to not only BDC auto range really quickly, but you can do an exact firing solution on it. it uh, it's the only reticle in existence right now that can actually auto range and auto lead an unknown distance mover. So you got a right. guy crossing a street. All you do is fit his head on one of those circles there, and it automatically is ranging and leading that guy for you. Nice. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was looking at uh, how that's kind of laid out. Uh, no, what I was getting at earlier, I asked uh, Lola or Hank to ask you if there was plans to build out something similar to the HUD DMR reticle that wasn't BDC based. Um, but I think he asked if that was BDC based. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I was just reading whatever Lola wrote on the thing. I probably read it wrong. So go ahead, ask that question again. So if, if you don't want it to be uh, uh, BDC based, you want it to be in mill or MOA or what? Uh, I mean, since most of the people I shoot with shoot mill, would be preferred to be mill. Uh, right. I know that there are some, there are mill subtensions on the center line of that uh, reticle, but the uh, the holds. Like that's based off of a BDC and kind of uh, like range dependent based on what I'm seeing. The the BDC is calibrated for a 308, 175 grain. Um, and then you got the mills within it in case your environmentals are changing or uh, the, I don't know, let's say you have a weird LOS without an incline uh, compensation to it built in. So the, the mill system allows you to, uh, instead of shoot at a thousand yards and you're aiming at the guy and you're, you might hit him here, or you might hit him on the nuts or wherever, uh, depending on the environmentals, it allows you to pinpoint and really put it right here because that your, your point of impact at a thousand yards will start to fluctuate depending on your pressure and temperatures and so on. Right. So it allows um, you to, to be really fast math free and be able to be very accurate. Uh, what you're what you're asking for is the one we're talking about with the dots. That's yeah. a mill. That's a mill based radical. Cool. Yeah. No, I like I like those kind of clean, uh, like hold up out in space kind of radicals. Um, the what is it? The EBR two C. I think it is that Vortex just rolled out not terribly long ago. Is that uh, the one with the dots going across? uh no sort of no 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 that's the other ebr reticle um no it's that you're a standard like smecker three like style reticle or g3 style reticle sort of kind of so it's like a crosshair or, i mean what what's going on on it yeah it's a, as a crosshair and then you've got um like sub tensions down there in like that christmas tree style thing uh yeah. like a simplified h59 <laughs> Right. The, so here's the problem with. Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. Elaborate. Elaborate. So we well, can, you know, I mean, if there if there are downsides to like that style of. Um, have you, have you ever shot game, that say out to like 800 yards with a 10 mile an hour wind or something? Uh, say again. Sorry. Have you ever shot it out to say like 800 yards with a 10 mile an hour wind or something like that? Yes. And, uh, where did you hold off? How many mills were you holding off on that? You know, I don't recall, if I'm honest. All right. 
So here's what happens when you shoot up those ranges and those heavy winds, right? You end up, uh, I don't know if it's the exact same reticle we're talking about, but here, here's what I've noticed with some of these is that your the hold off, how far off you're holding off for wind. And God forbid we're talking about lead, if you're talking about any kind of military type situation, oh, yeah, you're shooting yeah. out a mover. There's just not enough marks going across. Or they have ones that do have a lot of marks going across and you got 0 0.20 increments, which is great, but then you got a full mill mark spacing. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To where I can be very precise, if I happen to end up on this point, if I end up to be below that point, and we got a whole space, a whole mill in spacing, then it, it it's it's really rough. Uh, yeah. Not only that, but like with the BPR and the R grid 2B that's going to come out, and and some of these, uh, I don't want to dial in at a hundred yards. If I'm shooting at a mile, the last thing I want to do is dial in at a hundred yards. Uh, I want to dial in ten mils high at a hundred yards because now it gives me multiple, far more mills on the bottom of my grid. And I'm not holding on the bottom of the grid. I'm like in the middle, if not the top of it. So it extends my range uh, without having to put one of those funky rails to give me more minutes of angle and so on. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, have you looked at any of the prisms yet to like add some? Uh, or, they don't, yeah, they do. They add some travel by like changing the zero. Prisms? Like Hodnitz. Yeah, Todd Hodnitz messing around with like some prism no. systems. No, none of those prisms are going to track through. Our, our, look, none of none of the vortex, none of the burrs, none of the none of the primary arms, none of those prisms track. It's not a type of optic. It's not a type of optic that that you put a firing solution in. Uh, those kind of optics you dial in and you get it zeroed, and then really the reticle is what does all the work there. So. Um, no, 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 no. Okay, so the, the prism systems I'm talking about, uh, it's this like thing that hangs off the front of the scope. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That. So. So here's the deal with all that. They actually approached me when the first R grid was coming out, and they wanted to, uh, they wanted us to send a scope out to to kind of use in their advertisement, that kind of thing. And we looked at it, and it looked so crazy. You had this like piece in the front, mm -hmm. uh, fine, but then it had like these rails. They looked like when somebody breaks their leg, and they have like a brace to it, kind of thing. It looked nuts. So we looked at it. And, uh, you know, they, they kind of explained to us, you're, you're, you're adding times 10. So if you're at 15 mils times 10, you're at 150 and so on, that kind of thing. Right. I, I get it. I get the math behind it. It makes sense. But we looked at the price point on it and we looked at the market. And we were like, who the hell is going to buy a $1,200 piece, whatever, that you put in front of a scope to, to magnify it like that, to do all that. So it, it didn't make sense. And we didn't really, really move forward with it. The... Uh, 2.1 mile shot that was made by uh, uh, that Canadian team. Uh, they actually used that system, and it. it uh, so a lot of people think that, you know, that they have oh, the really? index in. What's that? They were. I didn't realize they were using uh, that. Whatever the hell it is, I can't remember the hell the name is. Yeah. The system. You guys, you can't remember what exactly what thing no. that you, you're talking about, so we can look it the, up. Okay. It's not the Barrett one, is it? No, no, no. This is like opinion. a separate company, right? Like some independent right. company. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Do you remember the you're name of the company? I'm I looking now. Okay. But you're talking about a twelve hundred dollar attachment. You know what I mean? I, I can I can get a two hundred and seventy nine dollar optic to dial in ten mils and extend my range way out there. I don't have to buy a two thousand dollar attachment. Well, so, I think you know, hot nets like messing around with like yeah, really like extreme long range stuff. Um, so I think that that's where he was going with it. Yeah. So they use that thing and, and that's how they shot that 2.1 mile. And it actually, it took two rounds to hit. Interesting. I didn't look that much into it. Uh, I mean, that's not bad, right? At, at that distance, I'm assuming. So here's the no, deal with that shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the second round, that's not horrible, is it? Well, it's the second round during the engagement. They fired a lot of rounds down that, you know, down there and had kind of doped out that whole area. Oh, okay. And I think 99.9% .9 of it was luck because one meter in range estimation equates off your danger zone. You would have missed the target completely if you're off by one meter alone. Uh, 
it, it, the wind, if you're talking about one tenth of a mile an hour on the wind, you would have missed. Hmm. Okay. So all the stars aligned for that shot to happen. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, if you know what that is, if you if you know what that is, let us know. Okay. Um, Tecate, te, what is this? Tecate GT5 gave us five bucks. He Here's his comment or his question. Hold on. Where did it go? Now I've lost the um, – Okay, so here he goes. He goes, Waltz, bias aside, opinions and thoughts on the RN50 versus the SHTF50. For us non-rich folk, for 50 long-range shooting, uh, 500 meters and up. I, I answered him in the chat, actually. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 but you know, best I, best I could, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the RN50, is that uh, – what, what the RN50 – Servo. Yeah, Servo builds a uh, breech-loading – 50. It's got like an external hammer and a screw type breech, I think. Yeah, you oh, got to screw it up. That. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, you gotta use like a, you got to use like a screwdriver to pop out. The, yeah. Are you uh, talking talking about the thing Royal Nunsuch helped develop? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's why it's okay. called RN. Yeah, Royal Nunsuch. Okay. Uh, oh, I get it. <laughs> Genius. Yeah, no, I'll take, you're I'll take a bolt actually. You're slower than me, man. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. <Not slow. laughs> yeah. Okay. No. 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 But I don't. I don't know what the RN fifty is. Um. And I'm not knocking Royal Nunsuch at all. I mean, uh, I think it. I, I think that's what it's I said. Cool I don't. I don't, have any, I don't have any experience with that. But I know what yeah. some people using our stuff have done. Yeah. So, with, yeah. Um, that whole thing that Royal Nunsuch made and those guys developed to be. Uh, what's the price difference between these two things? Are they in the same category? Is it in the category? Oh, what, is, what is the uh... the SHTF fifty? Is the is the uh, fifty cal that um, Safety right. Harbor makes? You can either put it on an AR fifteen lower or build a whole gun. Right. Um, How many dollars? Huh? How many dollars of money for the upper? Um, it started fourteen fifty. Uh, yeah, the same same like area in price. I think. Yeah, yeah I, I think I think the RN fifty might be a much cheaper. Hey Walter, is that an RPG back there, or am I seeing stuff? No, you're seeing the real thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's yeah. your home defense, or what? <laughs> <laughs> Neighborhood defense, sir. Neighborhood. Yeah, defense. pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, from my understanding of of the um, of the RN50, from what it is, is that it's going to take a little longer to shoot through that, right? Because of the whole way that it. Right, right. Mine works just like a regular bolt action, so you know. You yeah. Can, so I mean I think if you if you know that's just like personal preference if you yeah, want to do it, yeah. you know Walter's thing works like a bolt action. I've never shot that thing that um, Serbu is selling. To be honest with you, to be perfectly honest, I, I you know I don't like Serbu. That's my personal opinion. <laughs> Personally, well, that's not Walter saying it. That's me just, saying it. Serbu is an asshole that. as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so I'm not gonna support. I'm not going to support people like that. So there's uh, there's a lot of issues I have. I'm not trying to like get into that whole quagmire thing going on there. But that's just really my opinion of it. I'm not going to support people I don't like. Right? People so, ask me that all the time. But I think there's 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 some differences here between the two things for anyone who uh, wants to yes. make up their mind. Uh, I'm the way I'm looking at. I've looked at the RN50 a lot. So I thought about buying one to see what it'll do, uh, but I haven't. <laughs> The thing that keeps holding me back is the trigger. Like it's not upgradable as best I can tell, and it's got an exposed hammer and all that nonsense. And I, I'm just not into that whole thing. I'd rather like grab one of my AR lowers, uh, you know, and pop an upper on it. Yeah, I think I, I don't really think we're comparing apples to apples with these things. They may be in a similar price category. One may be cheaper. If you're looking to get something in a particular price category, and, and from what my understanding of it is, you want to take longer to throw another round in there, then, then you know, go with the thing from Serbu. Um, obviously, you know, Safety Harbor sponsors me and all that kind of stuff, but we spend a lot of time trying to – um, like testing these things, showing you guys things, giving you information about it, even getting other folks out there to uh, to to give you their opinions on it and all that kind of stuff. And so you guys could take that for whatever you want to. I would just say that me personally, if you ask me, I wouldn't buy anything from Servo. So I'll tell you what, I, I, I'll I'll throw the gauntlet down. If uh, Walter wants to send a upper on out here, I'll give Primary Armors a call, get one of their scopes top off that upper with it and then head out to the range. I've got a 2,400 yard range within a half hour of the house. 
So uh, I'll, I'll gladly go out there. <laughs> See what I'll do. Yeah, I got to get some good ammo though. If you're gonna do those kind of shots. Got to get some decent ammo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I mean you yeah. can't you just use like garbage ball ammo. I mean, not you, not you can't do it with with ball, but it, what just happened here? Yeah. Uh, did you I'm lose sorry. us, Walter? You still hear me? Yeah, we hear you. I think. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think Dimitri is, Dimitri's like throwing down guns or something <laughs> on the table. My my my, like, my headphones did weird shit there. So yeah. Nine oh four is chiming in. By the way, nine oh four outdoors guys. I forgot to tell you guys this yesterday. If you're interested in that new trigger that came out from um, from Franklin Armory, the BFS three S one, the straight one, nine oh four has a video on that, so you guys should check that out. Nine oh four says SHTF fifty rocks. Uh, <laughs> What did he say? Subaru socks. I don't even know. I, 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 I don't didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, and just just for let everybody know, way back in the day, which I left, I used to work for Serbu back. I left in two thousand three, so it's been a long time ago. So. Oh wow, yeah, it's been a hot minute. Yeah. yeah. So it's a whole a bunch of stuff. I don't know. I, I can tell you for a fact that Walter doesn't want to get into it, but I'm not going to hide from that. I know there's people who don't get into shit, but I'm I just personally there's certain people who I would not deal with in this industry based on my experience with dealing with those people in the past. You guys could take that for whatever you want. Well, you know? I don't know. I'm, I'm like I said, I, I, nothing I see of the, the Servu gun speaks of a gun that's going to be accurate out to the ranges that, uh, well, for saying he's getting customers shooting out to. Yeah. But you know, and, and then on the flip side of that, you know, Royal Nunsuch, I don't know people have opinions of Royal Nunsuch. I think what he does is, is he still doing? Is he still making videos? Not, not really. Actually, he gave up the channel, and I, uh, I think he sold it to Serbu, right? I heard Serbu bought it. Yeah, that's what I. That's 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 what it, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. So that I mean, I know, that's just what I, that's what just somebody told me. I don't know that for a fact, so you know, I'm the. No, yeah. no, yeah, yeah. And Serbu absolutely is doing videos on that now. Um, okay. And like that's sporadically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I hope we covered that. I wanted to, you know, obviously that guy like, uh, you know, spent the money to get our attention. So we appreciate the question. I hope we covered it. I hope we were like as balanced as we could. Per the, the person who has a lot of like whatever is probably me. You could put that on all me. But that's not because the that's not because I could tell you guys, it's not because Walter supports what I do and all that. It's just from my personal experience of dealing with certain people. I'm not going to deal with them. So No, like, yeah, like I said, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll throw that gauntlet down. I, if Walter wants to send out a uh, SHTF-50 upper, like I'll gladly take it out and okay. try to shoot there's out a, to a pile. I'm sure a, we can make that happen. Yeah, there's a young lady down here. I haven't seen her lately, but she was 17 when I first met her, and her dad would take her out shooting, and they were shooting 1,000, 1,500 yards. They had a place they could shoot a mile. They were doing that. And that's what she liked to do. And she was using, believe it or not, a millet LRS go. Yeah. And because um, that's what she could afford. Yeah. And, um, well, I, I tried to do some long distance stuff like about two years ago. And I and I got a 50 and I got a bunch of ammo. And then I drove all the way to Arizona. <laughs> and I tried to link up with Dimitri. <laughs> You know, and he like ducked all my phone calls, and then he's telling me he to have some kind of surgery. So he's gonna go. Here he goes. Here he goes. So when when Mike came out, he brought a uh, his 107 with him, his 50 cal Barrett, and uh, but he brought API ammo, so it's like not very consistent, not really what you'd use to shoot out a mile. And yeah. uh, we we ran into the same thing where you're you know. 10 mils left 10 mils i mean it was it was crazy it was all it was over the place yeah. 20 feet to the right yeah yeah it's not designed for that it's designed for da, 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 da. You know, well oh so what the what the api you're saying is not designed for that well not designed no. for target not for long 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 range shooting it's oh not, okay okay yeah, yeah, yeah no yeah. The, the the standard deviation on a, api and just your your old guy there and you there's just a bunch of crap that 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 round's not made for that. What is what? the SD on that stuff? What's the what? What is the SD on that? What's SD? Probably. Safe distance or? Uh, no, like uh, standard deviation. Standard deviation. Okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. There is no safe distance. For the <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, what is he talking about? <laughs> yeah. The safe distance is a mile. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I want to be a mile with somebody shooting at me. No. Yeah. Well, Mike actually got some hits out there at a mile. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw okay. that. 
Yeah, I, I, I couldn't get that thing to hit to save my life. It was just it was so inconsistent. It was just all over. Yeah, I, I think you said he, uh, he had come out and visited you, but I did see that where he was shooting a Barrett out to a mile, and I was, I was I was impressed he was getting something. My experience with that, I've had op- I've never done it, but I've had operator people that use them for a living tell me they couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with them. So, hmm. well, I, I got guys that with a fifty are hitting out to like two plus with with a Barrett. I'm talking. I was talking about with a with a Barrett, the semi auto. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's a Barrett. I don't think so. Mm. Um, here's the thing with that, and with any rifle, I don't care what rifle it is, your load development and matching up your node, your harmonic signature is far more important. You can't test accuracy in a gun by getting it and running some bullshit factory ammo through it. You don't know. I mean, right. that's not... But some guns might like that factory ammo, some don't. So unless you actually build the load for it, you really... I got guns that shoot like two minutes of angle at a hundred yards with factory, but they'll shoot 0.75 at two. So, I mean, it's, it's, you really, it, it, the harmonic signature is, is like the black magic. Uh, my friend right. Ken, uh, they'll, they'll take some uh, crappy shot out, you know, not shot out, but some crappy barrel and then they'll uh, fire form it. They'll, I'm sorry, not fire form it, but fire lap it. They'll fire lap the barrel, and then all of a sudden it shoots one rugged hole. Hmm. So, I don't know, man. It's yeah. You can literally you can literally have whatever rifle, and your rifle shoots great. And I go buy the exact same rifle, same brand, same ammo. And right. It's not this type. I'll have different personalities. Yeah. Right. It's a lot. It's, it's like a, a lot of. Brand. Yes, yeah, a lot of voodoo. Um, I want to ask you a couple more questions, but before I go, I, want, I was looking at this video that's up about the one mile shot, and um, I know that you've got a camo thing on there. You do your own camo, right? We never talk about that. Do you have like your own kind of camo thing pattern that you have going on? Yeah, I, I designed before I did the ACSS. I designed a camouflage pattern called Three DRP uh, that I approached Ooh. the U.S. military with. Um, it pretty nuts. I mean, this stuff is more effective than Marpat. And if you can beat out Marpat, you really got something. And uh, I approached Nautic and I ended up with uh, all kinds of uh, phone calls and phone conferences and that kind of thing with them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, after a while, once they figured out or they were asking me, well, how are you doing that? How is the pattern coming out this way? And they wouldn't sign any non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> they're trying to get the the secret, reverse engineer it. Yeah. So well, after a while, yeah, once, <laughs> once they figured out how I was doing it, I never heard from them again. Oh, really? Three, yeah. Three DRP camouflage, you said. Yeah, you you wouldn't find it on Google or anything like that. There's not a whole lot of people that even know about it. Oh, because you just never put it up. No, it, it's never been on the market. There's never been um, pictures of it released. There's only a very few people that have seen this thing. It's it's pretty neat. So are you yeah, not uh, are you not putting that out? Or I'm sorry, go ahead, Patrick. What were you gonna ask? No, I, I, just, I wanted to see the the, the pattern. Yeah. I was curious. I think it's is that in that video? Is that what you're using in the video, or is that something yeah, else? That looks like multicam or a derivative. Uh, no, that. that what that is is a, a multicam stencil that we sell. You just put it over your gun and spray paint. So that you're, what you're seeing on that uh, that mile shot is just a multi-cam gun. Okay, that's just a, uh, from the stencil. Okay, so you but your um, thing, you're not putting it out there? Hold on. Let me see if I can go find a piece, all right? Because okay. I, I, I don't, you know, a, unless somebody wants to fund me on this thing, I don't see it coming out. And obviously the, the Army has it, so whatever. I'll, I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so Tecate uh, GT5 says uh, he paid us two bucks. He said, didn't know that about Serbu. Um, SHTF it is in February. Um, okay, ah, you know, nice. we, we appreciate that. I'm not trying to, you know, make you go one way or the other. I'm just, you know, trying to tell you how I see it, <laughs> yeah. you know, from uh, my point of view. Um, and like I said, Walter's obviously staying out of the fray. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, Walter's no, being no, the no. better man. I know why Hank's saying what he's saying, and, <laughs> and I know why I say what I say, and I'm just going to leave it at that. So. Yeah, but, you know, we appreciate it. And, and you know, the thing, um, if you do wind up going with with um, with the uh, Safety Harbor, um, you know, Walter and the family, they'll be there to talk to you if you have any issues and stuff yes, like I that. Yes, I do that. I do that on a regular basis. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. Yeah. 
<laughs> and by the way, Walter has a bunch of uh, what's what's your um, what's your Black Friday stuff, Walter? Black Friday, all the um, PDW style stocks, the Kess for the Sig, oh, nice. uh, MPX, all that stuff's all twenty percent off. Okay. Uh, right. The steel stocks we do for the fifty cals, the mono stock also they're also all um, twenty percent off. Excuse me, twenty percent off. Hey, they can say you give me a closer look at Um. Um, yeah, so that kind of stuff. Stocks are oh, also. Hold on. Did, what, did you want to look at the thing Walter was showing? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah, ahead, Walter. Throw that up. I'll lock you in. Stuff, this is basically uh, a 50 cal SBR. Nice. What? Yeah, it's got yeah, about. Oh, you guys haven't seen this? 12 inch barrel. Seen that. Yeah. No, I haven't. I wanted to see the magazine and uh, all that if, kind of good stuff. If you look at. um, Is that the SBR? No, which one did we shoot? The pistol with the guns? This is, and what, gear? This is what Guns and Gear shot in the yeah. video. Yeah, Guns and Gear at the end of his video where I'm showing him a bunch of Caltech guns. Then you see us shooting uh, these. But we'll do Walter and I need to do um like some more detailed videos on it. Oh, yeah. That looks cool. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. I, I dig that. Now, what optic? Uh, what optic is that, Walter? <laughs> this is uh Century <laughs> Orange Cheapo Depot. That's what it is. Yeah, he just threw an optic. I just threw something it's a red dot. There's something yeah. to put on it. It survived so far, so you know. Really? How many yeah. rounds you got through it? Oh, I don't know, probably fifty something like that. But um, it's pretty. pretty cool. It's been on some other stuff too. It's been abused pretty good. So we'll keep we'll keep busting it and see if see if yeah, we we'll ride it till it dies. Yeah, there we go. Right. But um, yeah, this is just for fun. I mean, obviously, this is not going to be your long range choice. But, I really, really want to put that on a chronograph. I did actually. Um, this thing came out at about nineteen hundred feet per second with um, with um with um american eagle lake city 300 grain or what pardon me well, what grain was that is that oh that's a this is 50 bmg so it's a 600 and 600 yeah yeah so no, i was surprised nice. it came out that fast out of a 12 inch barrel so you know yeah, we, yeah that's no. what we were doing the other like a couple of weeks ago right we yeah, were, yeah 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 yep yeah. so yeah. Um, Lots of offers from people to torture test it for you, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it going to be you torture tester and it, or is it going to torture test you? <laughs> right. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, it's I, really I, the, re I, the recoil. The recoil is not bad at all on it. It's just that a lot of people get affected by the blast being so close. But that, yeah, that's what double punch for, man. Yeah. So. so it's fun. It's a fun. When are, you, when are you selling those, Walter? When are those? Um, I'm having barrels turned right now. So yeah. Probably okay. af after um, after uh, this little hollow, uh, actually around the first beginning of December, I'll have the barrels. So beginning of December, okay. Babyface is giving us directions from wherever he's hiding out. Babyface says back to Dimitri. I want to see some camo. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, right, so well, here you go. Hey, I'm gonna bail out, guys. All right, all right, Walter. Uh, it was good seeing you guys, Patrick R. Good seeing you again there. Um, yeah, Walter. Yeah, we'll, all right, uh, Walter. Thanks, man. Gonna, We'll bust some caps someday. Yeah, we'll so. see you tomorrow. We're doing the Black Friday show. Uh, I'll be there. Yeah, there's a lot of good specials out there, guys. Yeah, I can't absolutely. believe how much good stuff there is. So yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna so, preview something tonight for everyone hanging on. But okay, Walter, right. we'll see you. Let's right. go to the camo. Peace. Talk to you later. See ya. All right. Okay. So Dimitri, let's see the camo, my friend. So, I've never made any money off this camo, right? So can we get? Can we get some guys donating the Hank here, or what? Can, can we get like five bucks for it, or something? Oh, okay. Can we can we get someone to give up some money for the camo, Babyface? Like five bucks. Yeah, Babyface, you want to see? <laughs> Dimitri has never made money, Babyface. Come on, donate some money. Let's see if we. I don't know. Maybe we'll get someone to do it. Maybe we'll see. All right. I'll we'll, I'll, we'll... I'll send you I'll send you a check. I'll send you a check if no one. No one else. <laughs> no. If no one else ponies up the money, <laughs> why, why does this why does this check feel a whole lot like bubble gum? <laughs> yeah. So, so um, LV Louis Cipher says Camo Camaro. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, you, you got the five bucks there. Yeah. Oh, there you go. What Babyface gave up five bucks, my friend. Babyface. Oh, right. Babyface P giving the five dollars. Good All luck right. getting that money from me. But okay, go ahead. So, here, what I have here is like the arid version, right? More like desert. So we did a, a woodland version. We did a multi-terrain version. So okay, Dante you? Hill just gave you five bucks too, man. Awesome. So you just doubled right your profits. That's going to you. <laughs>
Okay, right. go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Go ahead. I don't know how well it's going to come out to the camera. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah, you got to hold it still, as still as you can. Yeah, I see. So this is almost like a digital kind of... Um, yeah, it, it looks a lot like Digi's, but the I'll, I'll tell the you guys what the, the difference colors. is. There we go. So here's the difference, right? On uh, standard digital camo, the way it works is they take... Uh, so picture like a screen, right? And the screen comes down and it presses on the fabric and then they they have another screen and it comes down and it presses and it presses and so on. So basically they're, they're using what's known as the CAD pat pattern invented by the Canadians. Yep. So whether you're using a uh, AOL one, two, three, or uh, a UCP MARPAT, uh, any of the, any of the modern digital patterns <clears throat> is it, it's essentially the Canadian pattern and it added different, uh, different color themes to it. What, what this thing is, is a reforming pattern. So each one of these pixels that you see there, when you get further out, they reform into an image. So I don't know if you guys remember, what was that, in the 80s or something, the 90s, where you would see a picture and it'd be a bunch of squares and you walked away and all of a sudden it turned into a lady drinking a Coke kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's that same type of technology to where as it gets further back and it reforms, what you're seeing is an image of the actual desert. Mm. So like what, what, you, what you design basically is like magic eye clothing for badasses. Kind of. It, it, I mean, the long story short, if you, if you can imagine uh, uh, an image of the desert that's been digitized, that creates dexterity, but as you get further out, it reforms itself into the yeah. image. Right, but opt out of gun control says, is that like fractals? Right. Okay, cool. I mean, right, I've so seen you, you post some pictures of this on your Instagram, right? On my Instagram? Yeah, no. on the primary arms Instagram, you've never posted pictures of the of this stuff on there? No, no, no one oh. has seen that. I oh, okay. Oh. A picture in private kind of thing. Oh, okay, okay sorry. Maybe I wasn't supposed to talk about it. <laughs> Did no, I out you? <laughs> No, it, I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, unless somebody wants to fund this thing. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it doesn't really do it justice, me holding it up in front of a camera. No, because I think, I've, yeah, I've seen the pictures you sent. I don't know if you have any of those, but I've seen pictures where you send me and you're trying to tell me, like, pick the gun out or something like that. Maybe that's where I saw it, you know? No, that, that, that's the stencil that we uh, paint the guns with. Oh, okay. So yeah, this so. one, there's nothing out there. I mean, how do we how do we get to like see something with this and see it in action? Like, what can we do here? You know, what do you it's need? Do you need a kick? Military, the, the, yeah. The do you need a Kickstarter, Dimitri? How do we do this, man? Do we? Yeah, actually, I do. I've never, I've never. I'm so busy with the crap that I'm doing now that I've never really. So I had multiple projects going. The reticles was one. The camouflage was another and uh some other stuff too and uh, the reticles was the first thing to kind of take off mm -hmm. so because the reticles took off i kind of focused all my energy on that okay okay yeah we got to find a way to do something with this you know um and so you've do you have different ones for different environments like if i wanted to test something in florida what right. would i do to make that or like let's say patrick wanted to test something in texas how, how would we, you know, Texas. I mean, what can we do? I don't know, Patrick, are you interested? Is it something that we could figure yeah, out? Yeah, like, that's something that would totally be cool to see come to life, man. Like good camouflage yeah, I mean, is hard to come by. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking about probably about half a mil to a mil in development for the actual roles. Cause in order in order to to print this thing, you, you buy a big roll of it and so on, and it comes out and it it gets printed. Uh, not only that, but to actually put the uniforms together, you know, you need to get the, the uniforms cut and sewn and so on, and, and that costs a lot of money too. And here's the thing: there's so much camouflage out there that you know. There's not a lot of room in the market. No. And, and, and some of it is really effective, like Marpat. I mean, you can, you can go on eBay and get yourself some Marpat and outperform 99.9% .9 of this, you know, supposed great camo. 
Oh, really? Uh, okay. Oh, oh yeah. The, the Marines don't mess around. This stuff works. They went through their sniper schools. Um, you know, it, uh, I can tell you in, in my areas, it, their stuff works great. I mean, there's no question about it. Uh, yeah, no, Mar Marpet is outstanding stuff. Um, I will say that, uh, what you call it? I, I wanted to hear what your thoughts are on like uh, the multicam, the cry multicam stuff. So here's, here's, because I tested this stuff. I, here's the thing with this camo thing is you're talking about 10 years of research and development. Just like I've spent all this time on these, on shooting and reticles, we spend time developing this thing. Uh, multicam. So the way camel works is here's the person, right? And here's the sun. When the sun is beaming on the object, you have enough light to display your colors. When the sun gets behind the object, it creates what's known as shadow lining. So all of a sudden, it looks dark on the other side. And uh, multicam was never <laughs> tested to that extent. I honestly think they got lucky. Uh, and what's happening is that on the side of the sun, it becomes light and arid enough to where it almost looks like it could be uh, a light colored brush or it could be brush in the desert, if you will. And when you look at it on the other way, it shadow lines, it looks like woodland. It matches woodland really well. And what happens in woodland very often is you have tree canopy and you have shadowing and uh, when you get into shadowing and low light like that, it almost seems to conform to that lighting and look like woodland. And when you hit lighter areas like arid, because the sun is on it, it appears lighter. So I can tell you in my deserts, multicam works pretty good during like the like spring summertime. But once stuff dries out and goes real tan and, and things get light, it doesn't work too well in desert uh, or like People will tell you out in, in like Afghanistan, and I don't mean Afghanistan green zone, like all that, the multicam works great up there. But when you hit like uh, where Camp Victory, you know, the, the real, it looks like you're on the freaking moon. It doesn't fare too well out there. Uh, the UCP pattern, what everybody hates, everybody calls it ACU, uh, actually outperforms it in a, in a real super dry, arid environment like that because it's lighter. So really? I think multicam is an excellent pattern for most people because most people don't live out in the middle of the desert, you know, in a real arid year. Most people live in a more wooded, more greenish type environment. So right. multicam works great there. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great pattern. So I, I don't think it's as good as a specific and like if you're in deep green woodland kind of thing, I think a uh, cad pat would probably be the best. Uh, Marpat would be, I mean, the army did all these studies. You can look them up. A lot of it has not been declassified. So yeah. You, you can look up a, 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 a buddy of mine, Kramer uh, from Hyperstealth, did a lot of, of, he has some really interesting stuff. Um, he's got this thing called Lightbender. He won't tell me about it. He says it's freaking classified, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it makes all stuff invisible. Crap. Yeah, it's like, uh... yeah. Yeah, no, no kidding. No, it's so like a Harry Potter invisible cloak of invisibility. <laughs> supposedly, that's what it does, and it's that, there's actually pictures of it. If you if you Google, uh, uh, what the hell is the name of it? Uh, Lightbender. Type in Hyperstealth Lightbender. Uh, mm -hmm. You might have some pictures of it. And it. It's a freaking trip. I don't know how he's doing it. He tells me there's no battery to it and that kind of thing. So, hmm. you know. I am looking now. Are you seeing the little girl holding it up or or she's like on the ground with it over her kind of thing? No, uh, I came up with a. Oh, yeah, there's a I see. Yeah, if you have to look up hyper stealth light bending material. What the hell? Oh, I see it. It looks like part of it looks like the road. Part of it looks like the bush. I, I don't know how what the fuck's going on, but yeah. OK, I see that. It's Photoshop. I can tell from the pixels. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't know. So, so from what he yeah, says, supposedly uh, the U.S. military is like working with them and all this crap on it. I don't know. Okay, very interesting. All right, so listen, let's do. There's a couple of questions left here. I know we've been going for a while. I figured we'll give some people some extra time since we uh, came on late. Um, so I'm going to hit a couple of things here. Um, this is kind of like a question about Vegas, where you're out in Vegas. Uh, some folks want to know, did the shooting in Vegas affect you or primary arms at all? 
No, it didn't. I mean, it didn't affect us at all or, or me. I, I wasn't there. But uh, I'll tell you what, I, I drove by that thing. And uh, my wife doesn't want me talking about this. You know what I mean? She's okay. like, hey, fuck out of it all. But I, I can tell you that uh, there's a lot of video and a lot of stuff that surfaced. There's uh, a, a one particular video where, uh, uh, man, I mean, come on. You, you guys have fired a bump fire stock before. I, I can't get a bump fire stock to run like that to where it's like, it no. sounds like. A, yeah, I never, I've never gotten them to work at all. So No. Yeah, but I know there's people who can, but I've never gotten them to work. I, you know, I mean, come on, we, we, we shoot for a living kind of thing, and we can't get it to freaking run. And, and imagine being under stress. And he's using Surefire Max for God's sakes. <laughs> yeah, that's a double whammy. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah. Wait a I've, heard, I've heard all right things. I don't own any, but I've heard all right things about them. Uh, yeah, yeah, it depends. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. to me, it sounds like a saw. And everybody that I know in that's, you know, in, in military type circles, they all say the same thing. It sounds like a saw. Um, when uh, one of the videos, the person drives by, you can see muzzle flash coming out of the fourth uh, story. But there's no windows broken out on the fourth story. So I, I kind of became obsessed with this for a little bit and try to figure it out. Because when I drove by, none of the shit made sense. So... If you look at that building in the daytime, what happens on the four story? So picture my my shirt of uh, here is is the the building. You're seeing muzzle flash here, but if you look at it in the daytime, it's actually reflecting from like a balcony area on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And there's all kinds of concealment and a way to get out. It's like the best FFP you could imagine. So he's whoever's shooting is reflecting right here is what you're seeing is a reflection of it so the person's not shooting from the four story it's reflecting from the bottom mm -hmm. so when driving by and looking at it i mean you're talking about a 400 meter shot with a bump fire stock i, I get he's kind of spraying and praying but uh uh and another thing too is like uh, hank you know like the uh, uh, fs of uh, fs the uh, stars five five six that I did, mm -hmm. yeah, we did extensive work on flash fighting to get that thing right. Um, and when you go to a three open uh, comp like what he was using, and you go into full auto fire like that, you're getting these giant Big. fireballs. Yeah, yeah, and you're not a conspiracy theory kind of guy, right? For anyone no, who's I out there, I mean, I think a lot of people heard those sounds and initially. I mean, I believe when I initially heard it, I was like, oh, that sounds like a saw or something like that. I think lots of people think that, you know, and then as you heard it more and more or from different whatever is maybe it changed and all that. That's the whole I think a lot of that is a mystery. And even when we were in Vegas, there, there's a lot of people in Vegas saying a lot of that stuff has been pushed, you know, like the media is pushing it out of the way. There's different people pushing it out of the way. No one wants to really talk about it. Well, I have friends that work there that had to actually evacuate. And what they said is that it was coming from different, like you could hear it from different places. They thought that somebody was downstairs shooting at the guests while they were evacuating. They didn't know what the hell was going on. Um, there was a guy that did a really good video on where he's analyzing the, uh, oh, I don't know. It, the way they teach it in sniper schools is you get shot at, right? Because the round's supersonic. You're pow, the pow goes by the round. And then you're waiting to hear the thump where the actual gunshot was. And you can count how many seconds equates to how far away they are and so on. So this guy did a full analysis of that and showed one at like 400 meters, one at 232 meters shooting at that area. There was also people that were shot in hotels that were completely away from Madeline Bay. There was crap. There was other buildings in the way where there was no way those people could have got hit out there. Mm -hmm. Once you get shot, the last thing you're going to do is run four blocks. It, it, none of the stuff makes any fucking sense whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I don't think we'll ever know what actually went down there, or I don't know, man. I, I don't know if we'll ever find out what's going because there's a lot of reasons for all that. Like for people who know, I know uh, Louis uh, LV Louis Cipher. He's a he's a Vegas guy, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know if we'll ever know what's going on there because for lots of different reasons, that whole thing is being pushed. And the biggest reason is Vegas is a big tourist trap. And they want people to keep coming out there and they don't want us, you know, people to talk about it anymore.
That, that's right. what my wife said. She goes, yeah. if there was a second shooter or people on the run, you think they want people to know? There, there would be like the whole strip would be closed down. Nobody would want to go over there. So I, I, I don't know, man. It's yeah. As a shooter, it, you know, not that not that I'm some like long range ninja guy, right? But just just knowing trajectories and ballistics and blah blah blah, and being there and looking at the windows and understanding how he would have to be hanging out the window in order to get that line of fire. You know what I mean? He'd have to be shooting in this direction. Well, you can't be off in the room shooting down. You have to hang out the window a bit. You would see that big muzzle flash. I, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. So, um, okay, so let's switch gears here. What new optic are you most excited about that you guys have coming out? Uh, probably the BPR... Um, the Aris MOA, the, the 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 grid one I'm talking about with the dots, but okay. Uh, <clears throat> so here here's the thing with radical design is you kind of you run into a situation where it's like what you want to do and what people want to see, right? So I kind of ran into that, and like the original ACSS, people are like, "Oh, it's too busy," and it's like it's too busy because you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You don't get that you need all that stuff in order to hit those distances. If you want to shoot 100 yards, you can do that with anything. I can get you an NC star to do that. You know what I mean? Like that's not a, so on these grids and, and instead of like conforming to, oh, it's too busy. We, we went all out and it has mm -hmm. lots of, lots of aiming points. And uh, because in, in that type of shooting where you're using a grid and you're holding off and holding over like that way the hell out there, it, it's not a, a type of reticle that you, uh, you need to be fast with. It's not a CQB aiming point. Okay. You know I mean? And the, and the, and the, the uh, dots on the reticle, are they all the same color? They're just yeah. different sizes, right? Just half and, and, and one. Yeah. It, okay. Well, on the mill one, it's half and one. On the MOA, it's, it's small dots until you hit a five mark. And then every five mark, it's big. That way, you know, where you can, I can very easily say 10 MOA or 15 MOA. And then, and be, you know what I mean? It's easy to navigate. Okay. But uh, I mean, I, I've literally put this stuff together with, with some of the top military dudes there, you know, that, that, that know the stuff. I mean, it's uh, everybody looks at it. Mike, Rex review. I mean, all, all the guys in the industry that really know anything further out I and mean, have all looked at it. It's not a, so yeah, I, I'm excited about that. Um, I'm excited. I'm working right now on a meter version of the ACSS Raptor uh, that we hope to get a military contract behind. Um, this is far superior to the RCO. I mean, the standard uh, ACSS we have now outperformed the RCO by 25%. Okay. So this, this thing will outperform the standard ACSS even. And uh, I plan on doing an open source to where the Marine Corps and the Army are welcome to it. We're not going to ask them for money. Um, if we do have to have money, we're going to donate it right back to like wounded warriors, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? And We'll, we'll make plenty of money with the civilian cells. We're, we're gonna have oh, okay, so for the military, you're just doing this to get a better optic out there. Yeah, we, they just, you know, they need a better tool than what they got. I mean, what they got now is a, is a standard cross, uh, BDC crosshair, right? So picture, picture a crosshair BDC. Well, that's fine, but 95% of the shots are actually held off. You're always holding off. And what they're teaching is this retarded thing called L1, L2, L3, of where to hold off depending on wind. And, and, and it's, it's crap. It's really hard to teach, and it's really hard. Let's say you're going to shoot at me at 600 meters with a 10-mile-an-hour wind. Well, you wouldn't be aiming right here. You'd be aiming like 10 feet off to the left somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because the wind will push it over. Well, you don't have an aiming point for 10 miles an hour to aim at me here. You're just mm -hmm. holding it out of space. There's nothing to aim with. So, you know, be, because of that, those shots are literally fantasy. It's there. Everybody keeps trying to upgrade the weapon system and, and that kind of thing. Oh, we're going to get rid of the M4, this and that. that the, the M4 is not the problem. The problem is one is the reticle and two is the training. Okay. Very cool. Patrick, yes. did you have any questions or anything you want to, wanted to add to that? No, I, I, you're spot on on that. Like a, it's not the, the rifle's not the problem. Um, no, I, I just wanted to listen to more about what he was saying about this. Uh, uh, 
new reticle he's talking about the the one in a, he said the moa version is going to have a larger dot every half minute right no every every five uh, minutes of angle oh five every five minutes it's okay um and then the mill is it all going to be like the same thing throughout or uh the mill is every half minute to a minute so every every minute has a bigger dot every half a minute i'm sorry minutes now you got me confused uh, every 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 mill will have a big dot. Every half mill will have a ha a, a small dot. Um, and okay, the, the, I'm intrigued. Yeah, the, the the great thing about these reticles are, are is not only that you can hold over and hold off, but the main aiming point where you zero in can be indexed in and held off. So you can use it like a traditional scope, and and dial in your elevation. When you shoot further out, you don't dial in your wind. Right. Uh, you, you can input your spin drift and kind of counsel that out. But very often you dial your elevation and start holding off for wind. So you, you could still use it traditionally like that with the turrets, but it also gives you the full out grid. Um, the neat thing is you can actually, like you can do your zero. Everyone's kind of set on a traditional 100 yard zero and then here's your grid, right? What I do is I, I catch that 100 yard zero, let's say. Then I take the turret and I do a complete revolution. So that brings it up, right? So once you shoot on paper and you find out how many inches are up, you can actually convert that and, and enter, enter it into your ballistic cap and say I'm 15 inches high at 100. And it will give you a whole new different set of drops. So then I'll do another revolution and it will give me a whole other set of drops. So let's say I'm going to shoot at a thousand plus. I'm not going to go off that hundred yard zero. I'm going to go off the second revolution. You get what I'm saying? It will equate to like an 800 yard zero. So now I'm only holding off two or three mils. I'm not holding off on the bottom of the grid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I think I, I see where you're going there. Um, okay, uh, if there's not any, because honestly, we've been going now. We've been going for a while. So yeah, yeah I got, I got my wife hard texting hard. me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't want to hold either one of you guys up. Um, you know, I, yeah, I think honestly, Dimitri, you know, we would love to see you come back and talk about, I don't know if we, like, there was something I planned on talking to you about when you came on. I don't even know if we covered that, but I think we I covered even, a lot of stuff. I don't even know if people want to hear all this crazy stuff. You know, I think I mean? so. I think lots of people appreciate all the information. I think so. Not even like, uh, I mean, I cared enough to threaten Hank with like some blackmail material. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, you know, I think it's good that you jumped on, by the way, Patrick. So, yeah, man, I think we should make plans to come back. Um, you know, when that reticle comes out, uh, I'm sure that we'd, we'd both like to, you know, get a chance to look at it. I know Patrick does a lot, of, lot more long-distance shooting than I do, so I'm not sure if it's necessarily relative to what I do, but I would like to see it, you know, see the videos that you do on it. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going to stop by the booth uh, come SHOT Show. Yeah, are you usually there in the booth at Shot Show, Dimitri, or do you move around? I, I try to, like, I, one, I'm going around trying to find cool stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, and two, I'm trying to run around with, uh, I don't really get to see, like, most of my friends now are, like, YouTubers. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with and that. That's I'm good company. <laughs> most of I haven't even met in real person. I talk to them on the phone, like, every other night but I've never met them in person. So a lot of times SHOT Show for me is like getting to see my friends and, and meeting them for the first time and running around and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think and, that's the uh, same way for a lot of the, a, a lot of us. Uh, yeah. Right. Little Lioness 001 says, I do, I do. Been following Dimitri since I heard his interview with Rex. So, and then oh, Dante. Yeah, cares. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So, and then uh, Dante Hill said, when my friends ask about optics, I recommend the ACSS first. So there you go. Um, so yeah, man, listen, at SHOT Show, I, uh, Patrick's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Maybe we'll, we'll sort out a, a, a link up. Maybe we can meet at the uh, Safety Harbor booth or something like that. You know, we can harass Walter while we're at it. <laughs> you know, give Walter a hard time. So, um, I mean, I, I got to do go ahead. this here. Yeah. All right, cool. I got Go yeah, ahead. I gotta be. I gotta be at media day, and sit there at the booth and kind of get them all set. And oh, you're gonna be at media day. Okay, so you'll be there uh, on Monday. Probably well, just doing a lane, or are they doing a booth? I think they're doing like a a, a lane to shoot. There, there's a like a, you know, like the standard uh, um, 
or shot show booth, but they're also doing like shooting. Um, I, I'm trying to meet up with the Army and the Marine Corps, so I'm not trying to stick around that booth for long. Uh, I'm trying to get this thing in service. So um, yeah, so you're gonna head off to um, what you call it, uh, the the ATAC. Yeah, the big special ATAC. ops one. You go into the special ops one, then I'm assuming. No, I'm trying to get these guys out in the middle of the desert. Oh, oh, you're trying to take them out oh, and do the special thing. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, Old Doc Sim says, some of us care to hear what you have to say, Dimitri. So there you go. Um, if I'm going to wrap this up here, Dimitri, anything? Uh, actually, let me start with Patrick. That way we get Dimitri to get really like the almost last word before I end it. So, Patrick, anything you want us to know about what you're working on? Uh, working on right now, uh, setting up, like I said, that uh, world record attempt uh, with Ritter and Stark. Uh, they reached out and they said, "Hey, we want to take a factory uh, three three eight Lapua and uh, put some pro shooters on it." Uh, I guess they're going to have like Team Tex Max, uh, Frank from Sniper Side, some other guys going to going to be involved in this. Um, and then they're attempting uh, out to four thousand yards in New Mexico, beginning wow. of December. Oh, cool! So that's okay, be pretty rad. Uh, I guess so Brad Stair is already like connected at four K. Um, Brad uh, got on target. I think it's a thirty-six by thirty-six target at four thousand yards uh, in six shots. So we'll see if somebody six can. Six shots. Like... That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, very, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, by the way, Big Daddy Guns is actually carrying over there on Stark stuff. Really? So, do they have some kind of uh, some kind of like base to get the the, the more travel? Because I mean, you, that that's you got to have some special rig there. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't see a picture of the gun that uh, Brad used for the 4K attempt, and I haven't seen what equipment they're putting together. Uh, they brought me in last minute to like coordinate some of the media folk. That's one hell of a fucking one call. I'll tell you that. That's that's yeah. been <laughs> yeah, dude. It's gonna be super cool, man. Like, um, yeah, absolutely. If you want to come on out, dude, I'd love to have you come out and watch. Uh, maybe maybe jump on a gun, give it a shot. Yeah, man. I want to see. I want to see him do that. Where is this at? Uh, it's going to be at uh, in Flying H, New Mexico. Um, fuck, what? Um, some some like ranch crap. Let me give me one second. Uh, Are I you going to document you. the actual firing solution? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Frank from Snappers Hide is officiating the whole thing. He's going to be providing like official video of the attempts. Let's yeah. See. I'd want to know how many mills up they've gone and what the wind hold is. And oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, shooters for sure. Uh, Brad Stair from Performance Guns. Um, uh, Charlie Melton. Uh, Frank uh, is going to be giving a, a shot. Nathan Grove from Ritter and Stark. Uh, Team Tex Mex. And I'm possibly going to jump on a gun and give it a shot because why not? Yeah, I mean, whether you're shooting 100 yards or 4,000, you're still going to try to hold the crosshairs where, you know, you think it's going to go. It, it, it's really going to come down to obviously getting your data right to get elevation right to get there. And then where the hell did it go wind-wise, you know, that that's probably the hardest part. And then adjust for wind. But that's, yeah, that's, so, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, um, yeah, December 9th, we're going to be doing a, a full day of, like, dope gathering and, like, working with whatever loads we've got. Um, then on the 10th, we'll uh, attempt the first, what you call it. Um, yeah, so it's going to be at the Felix Canyon Ranch. Hmm. Okay. Go ahead. No, I just, that, that's awesome, man. That, that sounds like a freaking blast, you know? Yeah. What I'll do is off, um, off air, I'll, I'll get you guys to exchange info and stuff like that. Yeah. Dimitri, sure. anything you wanted us to uh, know about before we end it here? No, I don't really want to talk about optics anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Okay. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Listen, um, I want to thank everyone for hanging in with us and watching and all that kind of good stuff. Before I go, I just want to say that Big Daddy Guns has a bunch of uh, stuff that's going on sale starting right now. Oh, well, obviously, it's going to be tomorrow at this point. So from Big Daddy Guns... Um, you know, um, their Black Friday sale is from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on the 24th, 5% off entire stock, entire store. 
and back orders on most items, 10% off purchases over $700, special prices on Keltec RFB, 10% off all suppressors, 10% off all uh, of Nemo rifles, um, and ammo, in-store fancy brass company special, um, 10% off select 22 ammo, and take up to $200 off a Sphinx, a Sphinx SDP. Really? So, 200 bucks off, huh? Yeah. It's a good buy. Yeah, and 15% off uh, in stock scars. So that's only the, they've got a couple of scars in there and there's 50%, 15, 15% off. I'll post the, I'll post this stuff online so anyone that's interested, anyone that's in the local area can see that. I wanna thank everyone for hanging out with us in the chat. We've got, we've ha even up till now, we've got lots of people in the chat. So I wanna thank those guys. Thanks to Patrick for showing up here. Walter from Safety Harbor Firearms, of course, Dimitri for coming in. Um, I want to mention the people that sponsor us, Safety, Safety Harbor Firearms, Rand CLP, Andrews Custom Leather, and of course, Big Daddy Guns. So I want to thank all those guys and the folks who support us on Patreon. We have Patreon slash Hank Strange. We will be here tomorrow. Tomorrow, Wednesday, is the Black Friday sales thing, so we're going to have a bunch of things that we're going to talk to you guys about. We have some exclusive stuff from Brownells. Um, I was just looking at that earlier. So we've got some Brownell stuff. We got all kinds of things. Anyone else who has any cool Black Friday uh, specials going on that they want to share, join us. We'll share that and we'll put it all out there. So there we go. And if we find out anything from Dimitri, I don't know what Primary Arms is doing. If we find out anything, we'll let you know. No, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, and then I think I'm back on Thursday, I think. Oh, are we doing a show on Thanksgiving? I do. That's what your wife told me. Oh, okay. Okay, we're gonna have to talk about that off air. I, I had no I, idea. I feel like uh, I feel like that that was a surprise to both you and I. So I think yeah, that, uh, we'll, we'll just plan on the week after. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Patrick, is that a 1903 or a, or a Mauser back there? Uh, yeah, it's a 1903 A3 with like the shitty right. cask receiver. Uh, it's a National Ordnance receiver. <laughs> yeah. Chad N says thank you. Everyone's saying thank you. Everyone's saying happy Thanksgiving. Let's not forget that happy Thanksgiving out there to everyone. Please enjoy. Be safe. Yes. Hope to see you guys on the next side of this. Don't sexually abuse any turkeys. <laughs> I can't make any promises. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Couldn't expect anything else. Okay, we're out of here. We're going to shut it down. Everyone stay where you are right Later. now. Peace out, guys. Thanks a lot. Later. Bye. Peace.